Good morning, dear all participants. We are delighted to welcome you again to International Conference on Contemporary Science and Clinical Pharmacy, ICCSCP 2021. Make sure you have a good internet connection and feel comfortable during this special event. As mentioned yesterday, in order to claim the certificate of participation, all participants are required to fill the attendance by joining this event with a registered email on your Zoom account. For all of you who joined this event by YouTube Recording in progress. please log in to your register email on your Zoom account to automatically fill your attendance. Thank you. Dear participants, I would like to remind you again to join this event by Zoom meeting with your registered email to automatically fill your attendance. Well, the second day of ICCSCP 2021, about to begin in one minute. Make sure you have a good internet connection and feel comfortable during this special event. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and good evening, Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear all participants. We are delighted to welcome you to International Conference on Contemporary Science and Clinical Pharmacy, ICCSCP 2021, organized by Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Afizatul Akrami from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas, as your master ceremony today. It is a precious chance for me to be our master ceremony on this very special event. As we begin this webinar, let's start this wonderful event by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and send our salawat to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First of all, let us say thank you to the Almighty God who has been giving us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, so we can join and participate this special event today. Next, please allow me to greet and gratitude to our Honorable Rector of Universitas Andalas, Professor Dr. Yulianri SHMH, 
Honorable the Dean of the Faculty of Universitas Andalas, Professor Dr. Fatma Sri Wahyuni, Honorable the Chairperson of Committee International Conference on Contemporary Science and Clinical Pharmacy 2021, Professor Dr. Apoteker Dian Handayani, Honorable Excellency Speakers, Dr. Penny Kalukito, MCP, MCP from National Agency of Drug and Food Control of Indonesia, BPOM, Professor Dr. Nor Hadiani Ismail, as a director of Atta Urahman Institute for Natural Product Discovery, UITM Research Center, Malaysia, Department of Chemistry, University Technology, Mara, Malaysia. Dr. Renard Reynal Abel from Department of Chemistry, University of Aberdeen. Dr. Brahmastanugraha from Associate Principal Scientist in Vitro Imaging Specialist at Cardiovascular Renal Metabolism Department, AstraZeneca. Dr. Hidehiro Wikusa from Department of Chemistry, School of Science, Tokyo Institute of Technology. Professor Dr. M. Taher from Kuliah of Pharmacy International Islamic University, Malaysia. Dr. Amrizal M. Nur, MSJ, PhD from Department of Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Public Health, Kuwait University. Dr. Clinical Pharmacy Apoteker Dedi Almasdi from Faculty of Pharmacy Universitas Andalas. And especially for all of the participants who are so excited to participate in this very special event today. Excellencies, distinguished guests, and dear all participants. I hope so far you found the presentation on this conference are informative and helpful. Again, as your main host for today's conference, I would like to say our thank you to join the second of ICCSP, ICCSCP 2021. On today's conference, we will have sev sev several agendas, so allow me to highlight some sequences of today's agendas. Today's conference will start by the opening that we are having now, then session one of plenary lecture, which will be delivered by Dr. Hidehiro Wekusa, Professor Dr. M. Taher, Dr. Clinical Pharmacy Apoteker Dedi Almasdi, and Dr. Amrizal M. Nur, MSC, PhD. Then, continued by Q&A session for all the speaker. After the session one of plenary lecture, we take a break for about a one hour, and then we are going to have parallel session for our invited speaker and oral presentation, which will be divided into four breakout rooms, pharmaceutical chemistry, pharmaceutical technology, pharmaceutical biology, and pharmacology clinical pharmacy like yesterday. And lastly, we will end this conference by holding an award presentation and closing ceremony, which have been scheduled at 4 until 4.30 p.m. Excellencies, distinguished guests, and dear all participants. Without any further ado, let's move to our next agenda. Let's start our first lecture session with our plenary lecture from Dr. Hidehiro Wikusa from Department of Chemistry, School of Science, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Technology Japan, and Professor Dr. M. Taher from Kuliah Pharmacy, International Islamic University, Malaysia, and Dr. Clinical Pharmacy, Apoteker Dedi Almasdi from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas, and Dr. Amrizal Amnur, MSG, PhD from Department of Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Public Health, Kuwait University. This first plenary lecture session will be led by Dr. Apoteker Yeli Octavia Sari, Master of Pharmacy as moderator. But before we welcome our moderator today, we want to remind you that you can ask a question by writing the question on the question room and the answer will be given during the Q&A session, okay? Without any further ado, now please help me to welcome our special moderator, Dr. Apoteker Yeli Octavia Sari, Master of Pharmacy, to be on a screen and the screen is yours. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbis rahli sadri wa yasirli amri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you. Good morning, honorable speaker and dear all participants. It is such a precious opportunity for me to guide this conference plenary session. As we begin this plenary session, let's start by saying basmalah, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And let's pray to thanks to Allah who has been given us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, and most of it for the life that we are still be given today and still in a good condition during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and send our salawat to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. We hope that this moment and ahead will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. As the MC said earlier, my name is Dr. Apotheker Yeli Octavia Sari M. Farm. I am a faculty member of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. I will moderate this third session today, which will be delivered by four keynote speakers, who of course very expert in their respective fields. Interestingly, for our four keynote speakers in this plenary session today come from a very different part of the world. Dr. Hidehiro Uikusa from Japan, Professor Dr. M. Tahe from Malaysia, Dr. Clinical Pharmacy Apoteka Didi Almasti from Indonesia, and Dr. Amrizal M. Noor, MSJ, PhD from Kuwait. All right, for the first keynote speaker, I would like to introduce Dr. Hidehiro Uikusa from the Department of Chemistry School of Science, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Japan. Dr. Hidehiro Uekosan got his PhD degree on 1992 from the KU University, Japan. Currently, he's positioned as a senior co-editor of X-ray Structure Analysis Online Journal and co-editor of Acta Crystallographica Section C and also uh, Journal Crystallographic Society of Japan. Dr. Hidehiro Uekosa research interested are Structure science of pharmaceutical crystals, analysis of crystalline state structure chains such as dehydration, hydration transition, design and properties of co crystals, crystal structure analysis from powder diffraction data. Uh, Prof. Dr. Hideuro Uekusa had received few awards on 2003. Prof. Dr. Hidehiro Ekusa received a challenge in research award of Tokyo Institute of Technology and on 2012 uh, Japan Crystallographic Society Award. At this session, Dr. Hidehiro Ekusa will talk about pharmaceutical solid state. Before we welcome Dr. Hidehiro Ekusa, we want to remind you that during this session, if you have question to the speaker, you can write the question on the chat room provided by mentioning to which speaker you are giving the question to. And the answer will be given by the speaker directly on the chat room or in the Q&A session later on. All right, without any further ado, now please help me to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Hidehiro Uikesa, to be on the screen to deliver the plenary lecture. To Dr. Hidehiro Uikesa, uh, the time is yours. Thank you for your kind introduction, and let me start my session. I will start sharing my slide. Um, is it okay? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, for the kind introduction. I also would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to ICC SCP for this plenary talk. Good morning, everyone. This is Uekusa from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Today, I would like to talk about pharmaceutical crystals, especially multi-component crystals, and the concept and application. Before starting my talk, I would like to thank my group in Tokyo Tech and my collaborators. I usually work with pharmaceutical researcher, Professor Yonemochi. These doctors are my EX student, and Oki and Yuda were international students from Indonesia. In this talk, I will start with an introduction and then present actual examples of crystal engineering. In the introduction, I will talk about crystallography and solid state API. Then, I will show you four examples of crystal engineering. 
in my group, our research topics are for crystallography of organic molecules. Some students study crystals with an interesting function that absorb liquid or change color by stimulation. And other students are studying pharmaceutical crystals, especially on dehydration, hydration, transformation, and on multi component crystals. First, I show you a quick image of what for crystallography. Crystallography is basic science. In chemistry, it is physical chemistry. Crystallography reveals a molecular structure in the crystal. Also, molecular packing is revealed. That is, crystal structure. Structural characterization is essential to use and to explain the solid state. In this example, we analyzed the molecular and crystal structures of Aquino. It was a salt crystal. As for property, anhydrous form rehydrates even in low humidity, less than 10%, because of the crystal structure similarity to hydrate. X-ray crystallography is used to analyze crystal structure from X-ray diffraction data. First, we measure X-ray diffraction data and process it by Fourier transformation to get electron density. The electron density indicates a molecular structure. Thus, we can analyze the crystal structure from X-ray diffraction data. This photograph shows a single crystal X-ray diffractometer. It uses a tiny single crystal and records the diffraction data. Then, crystal structure is analyzed as explained in the previous slide. The lower part shows a powder crystal X-ray diffractometer. The diffraction pattern is called PXRD, that is, powder crystal X-ray diffraction data. It can indicate a given powder crystal is a mixture of crystals or contains a new phase. Thus, we use X-ray diffraction to analyze the crystal structure and to characterize the phase. So, these figures show the difference between the single crystal method and the powder crystal method. In the previous slide, I showed a quick image that crystal structure and physical chemical property have a good relationship. In other words, crystal structure determines its physical chemical properties. A straightforward example is carbon allotopes, graphite, and diamond. Their unique crystal structure determines their physical chemical properties. For example, graphite is black and soft and has electric conductivity. Diamond is colorless and hard and has no electric conductivity. So, if we can see the crystal structure, that is, how atoms in the molecule fit together in the tiniest level of detail. We can understand the physical chemical properties, that is, how different arrangements affect the characteristic of the substance. In the following slide, I will show you several examples of structure property relationship of pharmaceutical crystals. This slide shows a mechanochemical property. Indomethacin is a famous non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Indomethacin has several polymorphs. Polymorphism is a phenomenon that 
the same API takes different crystal structures and different properties. AlphaForm has a greater compactibility because of the greater density. GammaForm has a higher compressibility because of the slip planes. This crystal easily deforms using the easy to slip planes. Thus, structure can explain the properties. The following example is about hygroscopicity. Cetafloxacin is an antibacterial drug and it has alpha and beta polymorphs and three hydrate forms. Although an hydrous alpha beta forms, hemihydrate and monohydrate are stable, Sesky hydrate is hygroscopic because it has a channel structure that can freely accommodate water molecules. Thus, this structure can again explain the properties. Of course, crystal structure affects the final pharmaceutical product. For example, processing stress such as storage, grinding, granulation may induce the phase transformation. For example, Ritonavir is a novel protease inhibitor marketed in 1996. Unfortunately, in mid 1998, several lots of capsules failed to the dissolution requirement. It is because phase transformation during storage led to the failure of dissolution requirement. The drug was almost withdrawn from the market. As shown in this figure, Form 1 has higher dissolution, but when it turns to polymorph Form 2 during storage, the dissolution gets lower. So we should explore all possible crystal forms by crystallography. The final example is for intellectual property and commercial value, which is patent problem. Paroxetine hydrochloride is patented first by GSK. The first inventor, GSK, only applies the patent for hemihydrate crystal. Then another company, Apotec, registers the patent for an anhydrous crystal. Apotec product contain hemihydrate impurities, but the claim by GSK was rejected. So GSK lost exclusive right to sell the product which they developed from the beginning. Thus, we should again explore all possible crystal forms by crystallography, including hydrate. Okay, I proceed to talk about API. As you know, the development of an API takes a long time and high cost. From this figure, it starts from thousands of compounds and only a few compounds are selected. In this later step, API form selection is also critical. The form can be crystalline state, amorphous, Liquid, which is the better form. As for the active pharmaceutical ingredient, pharmaceutical products are used in various forms such as tablet, capsules, injection, etc. But most pharmaceutical products, about 80%, are marketed in solid and administrated orally due to stability and convenience or handling. Also, in manufacturing, most active pharmaceutical ingredient API and excipients are in the solid phase, in the first place. Parental products are also stored as solid. Therefore, information about solid state form, usually crystalline form, is important. 
However, Crystalline API is facing some challenges. Although solid form APIs are preferable before act to their biological target, the drugs should pass critical steps of the manufacturing process and biopharmaceutical process. These processes relate to the physicochemical properties of the drugs, such as tabletability and solubility. They are the problems of stability and distribution. As shown before, there are several critical properties of solid APIs. The solubility. The oral delivery requires the dissolution of APIs at its absorption site, but 40% of marketed drugs is insoluble. That causes bioavailability issue. The hygroscopicity. Hygroscopic solid is sticky and difficult to process. It is necessary to control humidity and tight sealing, but such treatments are expensive. The stability. Chemical stability, such as decomposition, influences the efficacy and safety of APIs. Likewise, physical stability, such as phase transformation and hydration dehydration, will change the performance of the drugs. There are many other unfavorable crystalline properties, such as brittleness, permeability problems, physical appearance, and taste. Furthermore, some APIs appear to have more than one unfavorable physicochemical property. How to control the unfavorable crystalline properties? One of the answers is to modify crystal structure to change the physical chemical properties. It is easier, cheaper, quicker than chemical synthesis. This idea is called crystal engineering. Let's see the cock crystal and salt that are called multi-component crystal, MCC. Salt consists of charged molecules and ions, and cock crystal consists of neutral molecules. Cock crystals and salt include the same API, but physical chemical properties are not the same due to different crystal structures. Why are multi component crystals important? Within the race of producing new crystalline forms, Multi-component crystal formations have recently gained increasing attention due to their high propensity to be utilized as functional material. First, multi-component crystal can be designed by rational selection of coforma. Second, multi-component crystals are more diverse in terms of composition and therefore make APIs have the requisite physicochemical properties as a drug. As multi-component crystal exhibit superior properties, many APIs are marketed in this form. Actually, 30% of API is used as hydrate form, 50% is salt, and 1% is co crystal more development of co-crystal is expected. The key point of designing co-crystal and salt is supramolecular synthon. The synthon means a combination of groups that are highly expected to interact with each other. Co-crystal or a stable crystal is difficult to make without good intermolecular interactions. The interactions include hydrogen bonding, CH pi, pi pi, van der Waal interactions. The idea of synthon was initially used in organic synthesis, but recently the concept of supramolecular synthon has been used in organic crystallography. 
At the end of the introduction part, I would like to emphasize the crystal engineering idea. Crystal engineering means to make better crystals from primitive crystals. In this time, to create superior co crystals and salt crystals. This talk is for study cases of co crystal or salt formation of pharmaceutical compound, emphasizing crystal structure features. Please note that more than one property has been improved. There are four cases Benexate MCC, Epalestat MCC, Drug Drug MCC, Metochropramido Hydrochloride MCC. Let's start with the first case. The first case is Benexate case. In this topic, solubility and bitterness are the problems. Benexate is a defensive type anti ulcer agent, which is marketed as Benexate hydrochloride salt and an inclusion complex with beta cyclodextrin. Usually, inclusion compound is not efficient form. The problems of BEX HCL API are low solubility and bitter taste. The good idea is to form a multi component crystal to resolve the problems. At this time, we used the salt form for hydrochloride API. When we mixed sodium saccharinate or sodium cyclamate, they are sweeteners to BEX HCl, anion exchange occurs, forming new salts, benexate saccharinate and benexate cyclamate. The crystal structure of the two salts are shown here. From the molecular structures, they are found to be ionic molecules. As for benexate saccharinate, it is a monohydrate crystal. Thus, there are one cationic benexate, one anionic saccharinate, and one water molecule. This table is for crystallographic data. As for benexate cyclamate, we can see one cationic benexate and one anionic cyclamate. They are one to one salt, but interestingly, the conformation of benexate is different. Next, let's see the molecular packings and crystal structures. In both structures, we can see a clear hydrogen bonding scheme. They are ring type motifs. Please note that the hydrogen bonding site, including the guanidine part, which is a cation. Also, the nitrogen of saccharinate is an anion. The oxygen of cyclamate is an anion. Thus, these hydrogen bonds are classified as charge assisted hydrogen bonds. It is a kind of strong hydrogen bond. These strong intermolecular interactions connected benexate and saccharinate cyclamate anions to form one dimensional chain and two dimensional seat structures. Finally, it stacked to make a three dimensional crystal structure. Okay, were the properties improved by making salt? Figure A is for solubility. Both benexate saccharinate hydrate and benexate cyclamate have better solubility than intact benexate hydrochloride crystal. Figure B shows the intrinsic dissolution rate. Again, new salt showed an improved rate than the intact. Figure C shows a dynamic vapor absorption plot, that is, weight change to the relative humidity. The hygroscopicity of the intact crystal was small, but new salts showed a further decrease in water absorption in high humidity condition. These figures 
shows that solubility intrinsic distortion rate hygroscopicity were improved by multi-component crystal that is salt hydrate formation. Also, bitter taste should be sweetened by the sweetener anions, but it is not tested. So what is the reason why solubility was improved? When seeing the molecular packing of benexate saccharinate hydrate and benexate cyclamate, these crystals shared a common feature despite the hydrogen bonding network difference between them. It is a layered structure. In both structure, cationic benexate and anionic coformer are stacked to form a layered structure and this layered structure can enhance the dissolution. What is the mechanism? The first dissolution mechanism can be illustrated as follows. First, coformers leave faster from layered structures because they are highly hydrophilic. Second, API layers become unstable due to void structure. Then, crystal collapses to leave API. Thus, a layered structure would accelerate the dissolution. Let's summarize the benexate salt case. The salts have strong hydrogen bonds and form layered structures like these. In the new salt, multi properties were improved, such as solubility, intrinsic dissolution rate, hygroscopicity, and bitter taste. The unique layered structure would explain the improvement of this solution. So I can say, crystal structure explains all. The next example is EPA-Lestat multi-component crystal. In this case, photostability and solubility are problems. Iparlestat is a model drug for diabetic neuropathy, diabetes mellitus. This drug has two difficulties, photostability and solubility. It is a BSG type 2 drug. Even under ambient light, the molecule photoisomerized from easy to ZZ conformation. Also, dissolution rate improvements are expected. In this time, we examined co crystal formation by beta in. Beta in is a tributarium to prevent salt formation. This slide shows the crystallographic data and molecular structures. This figure shows EPR BET 2 to 1 co crystal structure. The molecular structure clearly shows two neutral molecules of EPR1 and 2, and one tributarium of beta-in. As the beta-in has a positive and negative charge, it forms the charge-assisted hydrogen bonds between EPR and beta-in. These hydrogen bonds make the molecule stuck along the A-axis to form a layered structure like this drawing. As explained earlier, this layered structure would play an important role in improving solubility. As for the photostability improvement, these photographs show the irradiation experiments. The upper part is for the co crystal EPR beta in. After photo irradiation, there is no yellow color change. That means no isomerization of EPR occurred. The lower part is for EPR intact crystal. The orange color faded by irradiation, meaning that isomerization of EPR. These results were also confirmed by NMR measurement. Why did co crystal formation suppress the isomerization? First, easy to easy isomerization requires 
a significant molecular motion in crystal because a part of molecular rotates. But strong hydrogen bonds in the co crystal would restrict the molecular motion. Second, a small reaction cavity also suppressed the molecular shape change for isomerization. This figure shows the reaction cavity of EPR molecules. The reaction cavity is the volume around the molecule, which can be utilized for molecular motion or molecular change in a crystal. It is reasonable that a larger reaction cavity volume allows isomerization motion and a smaller one prevents it. When comparing EPR intact crystal and EPR beta in co crystal, EPR beta in has a significantly smaller cavity volume. So the isomerization should be suppressed. That is, EPR beta in was more closely packed by strong hydrogen bonds and good molecular shape fitting. Finally, let's see the solubility. The solubility became two times higher and the dissolution rate became 3.5 times higher. The solubility and dissolution rate of the co crystal show much better properties comparing EPR intact crystal. It is apparently due to the layered structure. In this summary, Photostability was improved for the first time by co crystal formation with tributarium. Solubility and dissolution rate were also improved by co crystal formation. Again, the layered structure construction was effective for fast dissolution. The following example is drug drug multi component crystal. It means two drug molecules were combined to form a new multi-component crystal. Glicrazid, GLI, and metformin, MET, are drugs for long treatment for diabetes. Both are used in a single therapy, but the combination would provide better therapy result such as glycemic control and lipid index. The difficulties at this time are GLI is not soluble in an aqueous solution and MET appears to be hygroscopic. So multi-component crystallization of them can resolve these difficulties. These are the illustrations of two difficulties low solubility and hygroscopicity. As for low solubility, insolubility may lead to the ineffectiveness of the drugs. The formulator should try an attempt to increase solubility. As for hygroscopicity, such drugs are very difficult to be in reconciled. A solution is a closed packaging system and special facility during manufacturing, but it increases the price of the drug product. The salt crystal formation was successful. In the crystal, a proton is transferred from glycerin to metformin, becoming anion and cation. It follows the delta pKa rule. The difference of pKa's was 6.6 which is large enough to make salt. In the crystal structure, an infinite one-dimensional hydrogen bond chain of the metformin glycerin along the p-axis, blue for metformin and red for glycerin, was formed. Hydrogen bonds were observed between metformin glycerin and metformin metformin. All hydrogen bond sites are filled. The physical chemical properties alternation of the salt crystal is impressive. As for hygroscopicity, 
The Greek Reddit Metformin Salt showed no hygroscopicity. Thus, it is opposite to metformin, which has great hygroscopicity. The dissolution rate and solubility were in also improved comparing to the other compound, Grigradit and Metformin. So, the new salt has no hygroscopicity, faster dissolution rate, higher solubility. The crystal structure can explain the reason for such good properties. No hygroscopicity, faster distribution rate, higher solubility. Please see this picture. In the crystal, hydrophobic glycolazite molecules formed an outer layer. Between the layers, hydrophilic metformin molecules form a channel structure. Therefore, when water vapor is around, the hydrophobic layer protects the metformin channel. So the crystal show no hygroscopicity. When crystal is in water, hydrophilic metformin channel is easy to dissolve to break the crystal structure. It offers high solubility. These photographs are snapshots during dissolution. The large rectangle face is the glycolite layer, I mean the hydrophobic layer. So it remained clear during dissolution, indicating it is the protective layer. Phases around it dissolved earlier. Notably, high solubility and low hygroscopicity are contradicting characters but achieved simultaneously in this case. The last case is metochlopamide hydrochloride multi-component crystal. In this case, the stability of hydrate crystal was treated. Metochlopamide hydrochloride is WHO's essential anti-emetic drug to prevent vomiting and nausea. Hydrochloride salt hydrate is marketed. In general, 50% of APIs are marketed as the salt form, and many are hydrochloride salt. The hydrate crystal has an inherent stability problem. In this case, metochlopamide hydrochloride hydrate dehydrates at 70 centigree, and Metoclopamide hydrochloride anhydrous form turns to hydrate above 60% relative humidity. These stability problems limit the processability of metoclopamide hydrochloride. So we need to find a crystalline form that does not include water and it's stable enough. As a stable anhydrous crystal, salt co-crystal formation was successfully applied. In this case, a neutral oxalic acid, it is a glass compound, was combined with metoclopamide hydrochloride salt. The new anhydrous salt co-crystal of metoclopamide hydrochloride with oxalic acid 2 to 1 was successfully obtained. Oxalic acid was in neutral form from the molecular structure. So it is an interesting co-crystal of metoclopamide hydrochloride salt and oxalic acid coformer. In the crystal structure, all hydrogen bond donors and acceptors are utilized. It showed good stability up to 143 centigree melting point. The packing efficiency is larger than metoclopamide hydrochloride anhydrous form and nearly equal to metoclopamide hydrochloride hydrate. Let's compare the crystal structure of metoclopamide hydrochloride hydrate and new salt co-crystal metoclopamide hydrochloride oxalic acid. In the hydrate form, one-dimensional chain via bridged OHO OH 
Cl- hydrogen bond water molecule bridge to CO and Cl- on the other hand in the oxalic acid form oxalic acid bridge to two Cl- ions therefore we can say that water molecule was replaced by oxalic acid successfully in both structures all hydrogen bond donors and acceptors are utilized to form a stable crystal structure without crystalline water molecule. As for the humidity and aqueous stability, the new salt co-crystal MCPOXA showed negligible water uptake in high humidity, so the stability was improved in the MCP anhydrous form which takes water from 40% relative humidity and changes to hydrate form at 60% relative humidity. Slurry experiment showed no dissociation, I mean decomposition, of MCP OXA salt co-crystal into parent crystals, hydrate form and oxalic acid hydrate form. Of course, the anhydrous form of turns to the hydrate form very soon. So the salt co-crystallization successfully improved the stability problem. As for the dissolution rate, this figure shows the low dissolution rate of MCP OXA. The salt co-crystal showed a five times slower dissolution rate than MCP hydrate, as that is a marketed form. Metoclopamide hydrochloride is the BCS class 3 drug, and it already has a good solubility. So, increasing solubility or dissolution rate is not necessary. So, the slower dissolution rate of the salt co-crystal provides an additional advantage. It decreases the amount of drug administration and minimizes side effects by slow dissolution. The salt co-crystal is very suitable for extended release formulation. This slide is the summary of the new salt co-crystal metoclopamide hydrochloride oxalic acid story. Hydration dehydration of metoclopamide hydrochloride hydrate crystal has been suppressed by salt co-crystallization to form a stable crystalline form. The salt co-crystal has superior processability stability with the additional advantage of having a slower dissolution rate for extended release formulation. This slide is Final slide and summary of this talk. I showed several cases of multi component crystals. In all cases, crystal structure explains the property of the crystal. So, understanding structural aspect, I mean crystal chemistry, is important to know the physical chemical properties of drugs. Crystal engineering cases in the pharmaceutical field. Multi-component crystal formation, co-crystal and salt crystal formation provide a good opportunity to alter physical chemical properties to get a better pharmaceutical crystals. Thank you for your kind attention. Terima kasih. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you for your awesome lecture, Dr. Ukusa. Thank you. We really appreciate your being here to share the knowledge about pharmaceutical solid state. Uh, all right, now we will go to the second lecture of this plenary session will be uh, delivered by Professor Dr. M. Taher from Kulia Pharmacy, International Islamic University, Malaysia. Prof. Dr. M. Taher got his uh, PhD doctoral from the 
Bioprocess Department, Faculty of Chemical Engineering, University Technology Malaysia on 2005, before his master degree in Organic Chemistry 2000 at University Technology Malaysia, and uh, Professor Dr. M. Tahir, also alumni of Andalas University, because on the 1988, Dr. Professor Dr. M. Tahir uh, got the professional pharmacy program from Faculty of Andalas University. For the work experience, Professor Dr. M. Tahir uh, on 2005 as a visiting lecturer at, at the U University Technology Malaysia, 2006 as a system professor at Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, Kuliah of Pharmacy, International Islamic University, Malaysia. On 2011, as associate professor and 2020, uh, Professor Dr. M. Tahir as a full professor. For the administrative position at IIMU, IIUM, uh, Professor Dr. M. Tahir as uh, CPD coordinator for Kuantan Campus, Deputy Dean, Postgraduate Student, Head of Research, and also Head Department of Pharmaceutical Technology. And for the publication, Professor Dr. M. Tahir published more than 100 articles in indexes journals, a number of book or research book chapter, a few books. Also, Professor Dr. M. Tahir gained more than 1,000 citations with H index in Scopus 21. Editor at several journals such as Biomed Research International, Evidence Based Complementary Medicine, Makara Journal Health Research, and Herbal Medicine Journal, and also many more. For the research interest, Professor Dr. M. Tahir have uh, several fields, for example, ethnopharmacology, phytochemistry, and biological activity of natural products. On this occasion, Professor Dr. M. Tahir will talk about proneosomal delivery of acyclovenac. Before we welcome Professor Dr. M. Tahir, we want to remind you again that during this session, you have, if you have question to the speaker, you can write the question on the chat room provided by mentioning to which speaker you are giving the question to. And the answer will be given the speaker directly on the chat room or in the Q&A session later on. All right, without any further ado, now please help me to welcome our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. M. Tahir to be on the screen to deliver the plenary lecture. To Professor Dr. M. Tahir, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yeli. Must uh, Yes, uh, allow me to share my, uh, my uh, slide. Is it visible? Yes, Prof. We can see clearly. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, organizing committee, Prof. Dian Handayani, and uh, my friend, uh, Prof. Irizal. They want uh, to uh, uh, approach me in the beginning to join this uh, uh, conference. And uh, Honorable uh, Dean, uh, um, Professor Dr. Um, uh, Fatma Sriwayuni, and Honorable uh, Rector, if uh, he's still around. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, indeed, it is uh, my great uh, pleasure to be here with uh, my alma mater and uh, with my uh, uh, former lecturers also there perhaps, and also my colleagues. Uh, allow me to share my uh, uh, little experience in uh, uh, drug delivery. Um, so the title of my uh, uh, talk today is uh, Pronizomal Delivery of uh, Cyclophenic. Um, perhaps uh, we are quite familiar with the liposome. Yeah? Uh, that one is a very old uh, kind of uh, physical drug delivery using uh, post-polypid and cholesterol. 
but uh, pronism is a kind of a, a similar uh, types of uh, uh, physical using uh, surfactant and cholesterol. Uh, pronism is actually uh, intermediate form of uh, nisomes. The purpose of this uh, 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 design is to help uh, the, 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 to improve the psychochemical properties of um, uh, drugs. Um, I think it's uh, similar with Prof. Uh, Ikiza uh, uh, just now. Uh, he's working on um, uh, crystal formation to improve the uh, unfavorable properties of uh, uh, drugs. But here, as a pharmacist, um, uh, we understand yeah, the process of drug discovery and development. So one of them is on this uh, formulation. If uh, we still uh, can remember uh, regarding the drug discovery and development um, chart, yeah. um, if we can uh, if you can see here, yeah, uh, from ten thousand compounds that uh, uh, proposed in the beginning of the drug discovery, just only one or two will be approved. So uh, the fields uh, of the uh, the process, yeah, normally uh, uh, on this stage, yeah, one of them is on formulation. Uh, we know uh, in in vitro study, and also maybe in other type of um, uh, in vivo study, uh, the drug. Uh, oh no, in vitro study, the drug is potential, uh, having good uh, uh, properties, yeah, uh, to be developed, but. Uh, they fail to be available in the market because of their unfavorable properties. Yes, I agree with Prof. Is actually one of um, method to improve their uh, 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 physical uh, physicochemical properties is uh, by uh, uh, using crystals uh, modification. In pharmacy, we um, we are working on this uh, formulation development um, as. Uh, uh, we know, uh, even for the current drug that is al al already available in the market, uh, uh, formulation is also one of the most um, uh, challenging because uh, if you don't do it properly, so the drug will be um, uh, will be not uh, will not be utilized efficiently. Samples uh, the drug uh, that we maybe consume when we uh, we got um, headaches here, yeah? parastamol, uh, 500 or 150 uh, milligram. Is it uh, uh, needed uh, that that amount of dose by our body? Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe we we just only need uh, less than that. So the the the, the strategy is uh, to improve uh, their physical properties. So the bioavailability of the drug will be sufficient yeah, uh, to reach the receptor. So um, as I mentioned, actually, uh, uh, pronisome is actually intermediate form of uh, nisome. Yeah? So uh, in this uh, kind of formulation, uh, we use physicals uh, consists of um, uh, uh, surfactants and uh, uh, cholesterol. So in this uh, formulation, the drug will be entrapped yeah, in uh, the vesicles, uh, and then the uh, um, uh, the 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 carrier yeah will help yeah will help to deliver yeah and also will help the uh, 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 to improve the properties of the drugs. So uh, in this nisome uh, or a pronisome, yeah, so we can uh, entrap hydrophilic drugs and also hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic drugs inside, yeah, inside. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, the schematic diagram of um, nisome. Yeah, this uh, unilamellar nisome. It, it looks like uh, uh, COVID. Uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, actually, uh, it, 
it uh, consists of um, hydrophilic uh, uh, head and also a uh, lipophilic tail. Yeah? Uh, the uh, uh, interaction yeah, between surfactant and cholesterol making this uh, um, uh, physical formation. So the drug will be entrapped here. Yeah? I mean, will be protected by these uh, physicals and uh, the physical will uh, improve the, the properties yeah, in terms of uh, um, solubility of samples uh, and also uh, permeability. Yeah? Uh, the, the, the physical will improve the uh, delivery. Yeah? So in this uh, uh, nizam uh, 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 physicals, yeah? so lipopolic drug can be entrapped here yeah? because it's uh, head and tail. Yeah? Head uh, of the surfactant is polar and tail is uh, uh, non-polar. Yeah? Non-polar is for uh, lipophilic, uh, lipophilic drug. And uh, inside, in the center, is actually is aqueous uh, uh, compartment yeah? for hydrophilic drug. And uh, here it is a uh, bilayer. Um, in our uh, study, actually, we uh, produce uh, multilamellar. Yeah, multilamellar. In the beginning of the production of this physical, we produce multilamellar. Yeah, and uh, we can actually make it uh, a single molar by using Sony uh, Sony uh, fication. Yeah, and uh, this actually how a multilamellar uh, multilamellar. Um, uh, 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 physical look like, yeah. This is multilamellar, yeah. Actually, uh, in our study, we like to produce this kind of uh, uh, physicals. So, a uh, little bit uh, uh, regarding the theory yeah, between surfactant and cholesterol interaction. As we know that uh, surfactant they have a hydrophilic uh, end, yeah, and hydrophobic end, and this cholesterol is uh, the most important component, yeah, a component, yeah, in uh, the formulation. So uh, the interaction of uh, uh, surfactant and cholesterol yeah, through um, a binding of this hydroxyl group and uh, alkyl uh, uh, part of this surfactant, yeah, making it uh, head and tail. This one become head, this one is become a tail. Yeah? Head is responsible for hydrophilic and tail is responsible for um, hydrophobic uh, uh, function. Little bit uh, regarding the use of uh, noisons. Noisons uh, can be used for oral and also for uh, skin. Yeah? But uh, originally, noisom was uh, introduced by L'Oreal around 1980, uh, actually for their cosmetic products, yeah? for a skin um, uh, uh, delivery. Yeah? Because the, the, the because of the properties of these nosomes containing uh, surfactants allow them to pass through the uh, skin barrier. Yeah, through, through uh, so what we expect from this delivery, yeah, it can uh, be used for um, uh, uh, systemic and also uh, dermal. Yeah, systemic means uh, we expect them to pass through these uh, three layers of the skin to be available in the blood uh, vessels. Yeah. Uh, so uh, instead of oral, yeah, uh, this noisome is very uh, popular yeah, for cosmetic and also for the skin treatment, uh, uh, psoriasis delivery, and uh, anti-inflammation on skin, yeah, uh, uh, on skin delivery. Um, um, in our study, we um, uh, we. Uh, 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 produce uh, pronosome yeah, as intermediate form of uh, nosomes. Yeah? So the component of uh, pronosome is uh, it should be a uh, carrier yeah? uh, and surfactant. Yeah? Carrier, surfactant, and uh, also cholesterol. Yeah? And uh, later we will uh, add water yeah? or hydration to make nosomes. Yeah? So why we need to produce nosome? Yeah? Nosome actually, um, nosome actually is a dried form. Yeah? Uh, nizom is a um, uh, liquid form. So in terms of stability, pronizom for a uh, uh, long uh, uh, storage will be um, uh, 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 will be good yeah, in, uh, in terms of the uh, stability. Yeah? But uh, nizom actually uh, it is a liquid uh, uh, form. Yeah? It's uh, quite um, uh, 
less stable yeah, compared to uh, anisomes. And uh, in our study, uh, we use three different carrier. Yeah? Actually, we would like just uh, the study is just to see the 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 effect of uh, uh, physical uh, formulation using uh, 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 surfactant uh, uh, compared to uh, acyclovenac alone, yeah, or naked and uh, acyclovenac. But in our study, we try to uh, use um, uh, three types of carrier, uh, which is um, uh, glucose. Uh, uh, maltolestrin and also mannitol. Uh, a little bit the, regarding the, 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 the use of uh, 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 noise in the uh, formulation, yeah, uh, it's all uh, available in the market, yeah, like acyclofenac, acrylonoxidium, yeah. Um, mainly it is very useful for uh, BAC uh, class two uh, 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 drug, yeah. Which is uh, uh, low solubility but high uh, permeability. Yeah, Prof. Kisa uh, also touched that one uh, before. Yeah, so uh, the BSC class two drug actually got um, uh, unfavorable properties. Yeah, so we need to do something. Yeah, to improve their properties in order to make them uh, good uh, bioavailability. Yeah. Uh, including just now, like Provigis uh, using uh, uh, crystal modification. Uh, so these are some examples. Actually, uh, so, uh, some uh, drugs has been have been uh, formulated in uh, this kind of formulation. Let me again to recall the theoretical here about the surfactant. Yeah. So in nizam um, uh, or pronizam formulation. We use uh, non-ionic uh, uh, surfactant yeah, because uh, it has uh, several advantages uh, compared to uh, other type of surfactant. Yeah, uh, it is uh, low toxicity and also um, uh, quite cheap. Yeah, and uh, it also uh, uh, biocompatible. Yeah, so and uh, uh, nizom and pronizom we use non-ionic surfactant like. Um, uh, we have we used in our study, yeah. Uh, we use pen, yeah. So this is the most used surfactant. Yeah, I think uh, as long as it's, uh, some of you may, may be uh, quite familiar with this kind of uh, surfactant, yeah, span, yeah, twin, bridge, yeah. So uh, this surfactant is uh, 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 they are very important, yeah, and uh, uh, in pharmacy, yeah, not only. Um, for uh, nizam or pronizam, it is also uh, play important role in uh, the type of uh, dosage form like suspension, yeah, or maybe in emulsion. There are some methods, yeah, to prepare um, uh, nizam, yeah, uh, just uh, for your kind uh, information, yeah, you can use uh, thin film hydration, yeah. Uh, a three injection method, reverse phase, and uh, so on. So, um, if you compare with uh, liposome, yeah, um, myosome is using surfactant, yeah, as uh, a polar uh, component of the physical, yeah. Uh, liposome, uh, liposome is using phospholipid, yeah. So, um, why uh, noisome, yeah? Why not liposome, yeah? Uh, there are some the, disadvantages of uh, liposome. Yeah, it has um, uh, less uh, stability. Sometimes leaking. Yeah, uh, the formulation is leak. Uh, like uh, what? Like uh, uh, the, the the stability of the binding. Yeah, interaction between the phospholipid uh, and uh, cholesterol is low. Yeah, and also in terms of the cost. Yeah, liposome uh, for a uh, uh, phospholipid is quite expensive. Yeah? So uh, the role of a surfactant in nisome formulation yeah, affect the size, yeah? increase the stability, it can improve the, uh, uh, the, uh, the entrapment efficiency, yeah? phacogenetics profiles, uh, and pharmacodynamics, yeah? also targeting uh, properties of physical system. Uh, this is actually the acyclofenac. Yeah? Maybe you are familiar with uh, sodium lecolfenac. It's a painkiller. Yeah? Pain uh, very a strong, quite strong uh, painkiller. It's actually 
almost similar with this hexaclofenac. Yeah. Clofenac is clofenac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory used for osteoarthritis, yeah, uh, and it is class two in the bioplastic um, uh, BCS, I think this one, yeah. So a bioplastic class uh, classification system, yeah, class two. Uh, it has low bioavailability if you if you give it in the naked form through orals, and also it's poorly soluble in water. So um, this is actually the 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 the, the unfavorable properties of some drugs. Yeah, that's why they are not successful to be available on the market because we fail to uh, to deliver it properly. Yeah, perhaps Provigiza also can help this kind of yeah as this kind of uh, properties yeah, in Xclofenac is quite a good um, uh, uh, activities yeah for uh, painkiller. Yeah, one of uh, Strategy is using uh, this uh, noisome and pronosome uh, uh, formulation. Yeah? Maybe you can also play with the uh, uh, crystal yeah, formation in order to improve their psychochemical uh, psycho properties. So uh, let's go to our uh, research. Yeah? So in our research, we uh, did the, 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 the planning yeah, regarding the formulation yeah, and um, we developed the uh, formulation and um, we uh, did testing. Yeah, testing uh, with regard to the properties of the uh, formulation, and uh, later we check for stability, and uh, also we um, uh, check for release study in vitro and also in vivo. There are uh, several stages in our study. Yeah. The first stage is uh, preparation yeah, on an optimization of pronosome and nisomes. Yeah. Stage two, pronosome and nisome characterization. Uh, stage three, uh, drug release. And uh, stage four, uh, drug stability. So in our study, uh, we use um, this uh, uh, kind of uh, composition. Yeah. Uh, we use surfactant. Yeah, uh, one uh, of them uh, is, uh, we uh, saw the table just now. Yeah, so we use pen sixty. Yeah, pen sixty, and we use cholesterol. Yeah, cholesterol is an important component in physical uh, uh, formulation. Yeah, uh, it uh, function is to uh, uh, improve the membrane. Yeah, or membrane stabilizer, and carriers. Yeah. Carriers, um, carriers, actually, this one is like filler. Yeah, you can uh, say uh, the role is like filler in tablet. Yeah, because uh, to, in, to, to, to increase the, 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 the bulk, yeah, the bulk of the uh, formulation. Yeah, we use three, three types. Actually, we would like to compare, yeah, to compare between um, this uh, uh, carrier, yeah, uh, glucose. We name it as uh, formulation one, malto, mal maltodexin uh, FN2, and um, manitol. Yeah? We use uh, in uh, FN3. <clears throat> so, the, this is the component of our pronosomes. Yeah? Um, so, uh, we use surfactant and uh, membrane stabilizer consists of uh, uh, span and also cholesterol. The ratio is uh, 2.1 to yeah? carriers, this one. Yeah? And uh, the, the amount of uh, drug. Uh, we use uh, 10 milligram in our formulation. So the design uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the composition, yeah, we use three, uh, two uh, time three factorial design yeah, using um, uh, glucose, malto, maltodextrin, and also manitol so with the percentage of 40, 60, and 80. Yeah? Later, we will compare the uh, properties and also their uh, 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 their uh, their their their, uh, their um, uh, absorption yeah absorption um, uh, capability. Um, this uh, the characterization yeah. Um, actually, this study is quite um, interesting because we can just uh, observe yeah as uh, as uh, the the the, the uh, uh, physical properties, yeah. Like uh, in our study, we uh, make a rating, yeah, one, two, three, yeah. 
uh, one uh, is a jelly layer yeah, on the uh, bottom of the flask yeah, uh, with regard to their stickiness, yeah, very sticky, yeah, and uh, uh, ability to form suspension, there is no suspension in uh, uh, rating one. Yeah? So this one is just to wrap. Yeah? Whatever we uh, obtain from that formulation, we, we did a rating, yeah? one, two, three. Yeah? So for example, uh, rating three, we got uh, fine powder, non-sticky, easily uh, suspension uh, formation. So uh, based on the, 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 the evolution, yeah, uh, we have FM1, 2, 3, yeah, this texture. So based on uh, previous rating, yeah, we, we just stick, yeah, we just stick a letter where we will decide which one to be used for further study. So in the preparation of uh, pronosome that we uh, use is using slurry method, yeah, slurry methods. We put carrier in this flask, yeah, uh, and to put uh, organic solution, yeah. We use uh, methanol and chloroform one one or 50-50, yeah, uh, to dissolve the drug, yeah, plus surfactant and cholesterol, uh, and we uh, did uh, uh, evaporation using rotary evaporators, yeah. And what we have later is uh, we can get uh, free uh, flowing prenzal powder, yeah. So of course it will be three different uh, product later because we use three different carrier. And what we observe yeah, from the, the bottom of the flask is uh, uh, the powder. Yeah, that actually, this one is not being uh, detached yeah, yet, yeah, still stick, but uh, we just can just release them from this uh, flask. So uh, this is actually the, 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 how actually it uh, uh, looks like, yeah? The figure jelly layer, the jelly, making jelly, meaning this formulation is not really, um, uh, 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 you can write is not good, yeah? But this dry powder, yeah? This, uh, the is this one is. So maybe this one also can be studied, yeah? For the crystal uh, formation, yeah? Because crystal formation also play an important role in terms of the solubility. Um, we did, uh, but not really as uh, deep as Prof. Ikiza mentioned just now. Yeah, we did it just to compare between uh, uh, naked uh, extravenac. We can say naked, yeah, and actually, yeah, they are naked. Yeah, uh, we naked means uh, we don't do anything to them. Yeah, so we, we can call them as naked extravenac. Uh, and uh, well, this table is not really uh, presented properly. Yeah, is FN1, yeah, this composition, yeah, 100 milligram exolofenac, uh, uh, 500 milligram span, yeah, then this is the composition, yeah, the composition of the formula. That we uh, proceed for uh, for the study. Mm. And after we uh, met uh, pronisome, yeah, we, uh, as we mentioned uh, just now, yeah, pronisome actually is. Uh, uh, intermediate form of nizomes. Yeah? So uh, to make uh, nizome, we need to do hydration yeah? to add water to the pronizome to, di to, 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 to dissolve it, yeah? to dissolve the uh, uh, vesicles yeah? uh, using distilled water, yeah? temperature about 80 degrees Celsius, hand shaking. Yeah? And this is the process. And then this experimental design actually. Um, we have uh, uh, some other um, um, method and also design, but I, 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 I do not uh, put all in uh, this presentation today. Yeah, just I, I put some that I think uh, is important to support uh, this kind of uh, talk. Yeah? So uh, this uh, experimental design for the factors affecting hydration of polynosome to get nanosomes. Yeah, this uh, volume of uh, hydration yeah, in composition nine or so. When we think to entrapment efficiency. Yeah? So the entrapment of uh, efficiency, how much uh, uh, um, uh, sclofenac was entrapped in the uh, physicals, yeah? we use the centrifugation, yeah? this letter we get uh, the, 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 the drug yeah? that, that ready to be analyzed using uh, SPLC. Yeah? Um, before we proceed with SPLC, normally we, we need to do a uh, validation. Yeah? We did validation on the uh, product, whether this peak is uh, there or not. Yeah? 
So this one is important. Eh? We are doing a uh, uh, space analysis. We need to check the the validate the machine first, yeah, and also to check whether it is real drug or not, yeah. So everything is okay, yeah. There's blank. There is no peak, yeah. Placebo no peak, yeah. And as the mesom and also standard solution, yeah, we can uh, we obtain the peak here. So this one is to be used in uh, further analysis, uh, yeah, because to make sure, yeah, this peak is available for any kind of uh, SPLC analysis for acyclovenide. And then uh, for characterization, yeah. Usually there are some others, yeah. But uh, we, based on the availability of the, uh, the the facilities and equipment, we um, use this uh, uh, characterization yeah? using alternated total reflectance infrared, yeah. DSC, um, uh, powder X-ray diffraction, scanning electron microscope, and also uh, powder flow availability. So. Uh, the interaction yeah, between uh, isoclofenac and uh, um, uh, physical or uh, cholesterol and also a maltodextrin as well as uh, uh, surfactant, we need to check yeah, uh, using uh, um, FTIR. Yeah? Um, so uh, based on our uh, analysis, yeah, maybe we can show it very detailed here. Yeah? Uh, this pure uh, acyclofenac, yeah, FN1, FN2, FN3, uh, there is no um, interaction between uh, that, um, that component. Yeah? There is no interaction between acyclofenac and uh, altolexin or uh, manitol or glucose. Yeah? And also there is no interaction with physicals yeah? based on our uh, analysis. Yeah? There is no significant new band yeah, appear uh, uh, after uh, the formulation, and also uh, we also check yeah for um, uh, DAC yeah uh, differential scanning colometry yeah thermograms is uh, for from FN one FN two and if you can uh, see here yeah the form uh, the, the the formation yeah. Uh, scrolling to uh, uh, from a uh, uh, crystalline form to be amorphous. Yeah. So uh, logically, yeah, in the formulation we want to uh, see, yeah, whether and whether uh, uh, pre and uh, after, yeah, pre and after, or uh, before formulation and after formulation, yeah. So in this uh, uh, study, we can see that actually the, 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 the formation of uh, ascorbonate uh, when we uh, formulate using um, uh, pronizone, uh, the, the, the property is changing yeah? from uh, uh, crystalline to amorphous, means it can uh, help the uh, solubility. Yeah? This one is... Uh, not really uh, deep as uh, Prof. Kiza uh, studied. Yeah? Um, so uh, we need to check yeah, the, 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 the sterility of uh, sclofenac. Yeah? So uh, in, the formula in uh, formulation, yeah, for, uh, for uh, maybe uh, just to share with Prof. Kiza, yeah? uh, we don't study it very detail. Yeah? We just uh, want to see whether the before and after is uh, there is uh, uh, changing or not, yeah. And after that, we do um, analysis, yeah. So to support our finding, yeah. So the 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 the, the, the study yeah, uh, found that um, uh, this uh, kind of uh, 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 crystal formation, yeah, pure oxalophenol actually is. Uh, uh, crystal, yeah, FN1 glucose also uh, in crystal form. And um, uh, maltodextrin actually, uh, it is not um, uh, in a crystalline form, yeah. So we, there's no uh, sharp uh, peak here uh, in the uh, chromatogram, yeah. And um, FN3 uh, is a uh, manitol, yeah? there is um, highly, uh, uh, what, uh, the peaks, yeah, sharp uh, peaks here, yeah, is uh, meaning that it is high crystalline uh, formation. 
And then to, uh, in the uh, um, uh, 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 characterization, yeah, we also uh, check yeah, for the uh, morphology using uh, SEM. Yeah? Uh, it's supposed to be, uh, morphology is supposed to be same like the carrier, yeah? uh, like um, FN1 using glucose. Yeah? Actually, this uh, the glucose uh, alone yeah? without uh, formulation, yeah? making irregular shape yeah? after we uh, mix yeah? with uh, the physical. And then uh, maltodexin yeah? is actually uh, uh, following the uh, nature yeah? uh, properties, yeah? uh, making a spherical shape. Yeah? So just to, to confirm that, uh, what actually uh, the 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 end uh, product look like, and then many tools uh, also following the nature um, crystal yeah? uh, crystalline shape yeah? is compared almost similar uh, uh, morphology, and then uh, 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 we get to entrapment efficiency. Yeah, uh, entrapment efficiency is important. Yeah. Because uh, that one is the most, uh, uh, what you call it, the function of the uh, 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 noise on the, uh, uh, noise on, yeah, in formulation, because we want them to entrap, yeah? we want them to trap the drug inside. Yeah? So we need to check uh, how, uh, how efficient. Yeah? The, the function of uh, nizam to 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 hold yeah? like um, uh, liposome yeah their entrapment efficiency sometimes is uh, quite poor because some um, some leaking yeah some leaking in the uh, uh, physical uh, uh, strength yeah of the interaction so um, based on the study FN1 to FN2, FF3, yeah? so uh, almost um, um, uh, not really a, a much uh, different yeah? between FN1 and FN2 and F FN3, yeah? but uh, FN2 and F3 have uh, uh, higher yeah? uh, uh, entrapment efficiency compared to FN1. And then uh, we also check for the physical size, uh, polydisparate, uh, this uh, uh, parity index, and also the hypothesis measurement. Yeah, actually, uh, for the, this kind of formulation, we don't um, claim them as a nano, yeah, nano formulation, yeah? because the size is uh, uh, in micrometer actually, yeah, not in nano. Yeah, can you can say nano, but uh, in nano must be below 100. Yeah, this one is for 5240 uh, nanometers is a micro, yeah, micro size, yeah, 5.2 micro, yeah. And PDA, um, this uh, uh, there's this value, yeah, the heterodispersity uh, of the another one dispersion, yeah, and uh, the potential the. Uh, the statement here, eh? the larger the zeta potential absolute value is the larger the amount of uh, surface charge, uh, surface uh, charge. Yeah? And uh, we also studied uh, the uh, uh, drug content. Yeah? Uh, we compared between um, FN1, FN2, and FN3. Yeah? So uh, uh, the percent uh, FN1 is higher yeah? using uh, glucose. And then to, um, we also check uh, for um, after we uh, convert yeah, pronizom to nizom. I mean, uh, after we uh, did hydration to the pronizom, meaning they are now in the form of uh, a liquid. Yeah? So we need to check whether the, our product is in the form of uh, unilamellar or multilamellar. Yeah? Um, based on this observation, is quite, <laughs> the figure is quite small. Yeah? Uh, better to see it under the higher uh, magnification, but uh, based on our analysis, it is multilamellar physicals. Yeah, multilamellar physicals. Um, all of them are in multilamellar. Meaning, inside this uh, uh, physical, there is small there. Yeah, small there inside. Yeah. So, meaning, uh, how to make them to be unilamellar? Yeah, actually, um, we can do sonification. Yeah, sonification actually. Yeah, do hydro. Uh, 
magnification to reduce the the size yeah of the uh, physical yeah? And then uh, we also studied uh, uh, in vitro uh, drug release using USP uh, pedal method. Yeah. Um, uh, if you uh, you are interested, you are interested to study in vitro, you just uh, go to the SP pedal method. Yeah. We so uh, our task is just to check. Yeah. Just to check whether um, uh, drug release uh, uh, of uh, Acyclofenac and uh, uh, nazom is better. Uh, I mean, uh, nazom is uh, better than acyclofenac. Yeah? We would like just to 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 prove that. Yeah, we would like to prove prove that. Yeah? This one is a pure drug. I mean, the acyclofenac, uh, and there's uh, three uh, promotion got um, good uh, uh, release. Yeah, good release using uh, better method. And um, in vitro that we list also uh, using dialysis method. Yeah, this one is quite interesting. Sometimes when we publish, yeah, when publish the yeah, article, the, we don't include this one. To, uh, sometimes the reviewer um, uh, will uh, uh, are keen to uh, recommend our paper. Yeah? So um, this is actually using um, uh, membrane, yeah, in membrane, yeah, um, because this uh, kind of study is quite interesting because uh, we can't um, uh, we can't uh, say yeah? we can say the 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 result is okay yeah? or, or not. Yeah? So um, in our study, we compare between pure drug or naked acyclofenac in the three um, uh, formulation. Uh, we um, saw that uh, the three formulation got a better yeah? uh, drug release. Yeah? Uh, okay, and then uh, we did also uh, in vivo drug release using uh, uh, a spreg uh, dual drug, uh, uh, spreg, uh, Dole uh, red, yeah, uh, through um, in uh, through oral, yeah, through oral uh, administration, yeah, and uh, after that we check the 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 the, the, the blood plasma. Yeah? So just compare again, yeah, we yeah, we are not uh, talking in detail, yeah, uh, between the pure drug and also the uh, formation, yeah. So the, we we analyze that uh, using SPLC, of course. Yeah, uh, we can um, uh, see that uh, the drug formulation um, uh, have uh, uh, high uh, bioavailability. Yeah, meaning uh, pronosum uh, uh, formulation can improve. Yeah, the absorption. Yeah, absorption rate uh, um, rate in. The, uh, animal uh, model, and uh, we did also stability study. Yeah, as uh, we know that pronazom in in the form of uh, powder. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, stable. Yeah? Stable uh, for uh, storage. Yeah, we did study for three months uh, in uh, normal and also accelerated uh, uh, condition. Yeah, accelerated condition we use forty degrees Celsius. Yeah. So based on our analysis, yeah, just uh, there is nothing, yeah, nothing. Um, uh, uh, there was nothing uh, uh, changes, yeah, except for just maybe this uh, what the broad, yeah, broadening of uh, original uh, hydroxyl. Maybe this one because of hydroscopic uh, properties. Uh, uh, Affect yeah, affect the, the, the formulation. And also this one, yeah, uh, there is no changes actually yeah, uh, for the stability after uh, three months storage. And this is actually the stability study. Yeah. So uh, this is actually the 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 the, the how actually the Pronazom looks like yeah. This in the powder uh, powder form yeah. So um, uh, when we want to use, we have to hydrate it. Yeah? We have to hydrate. 
we need to add water yeah uh, so we did um, uh, study yeah for three months yeah um, so based on our and uh, based on our uh, results yeah um, there is no changes yeah after a uh, three month uh, uh, stability study so meaning to say that the formulation is stable yeah this one yeah uh, uh, perhaps just happened to accelerated condition yeah uh, between the, um, uh, normal condition and also accelerated condition if you see the blue um, bar is uh, for uh, normal condition yeah and uh, the orange one is for accelerated this accelerated got some uh, changes in terms of the uh, uh, content And also stability using zeta potentials. Yeah, um, based on our study, that uh, uh, if zeta potential values were below then uh, minus the team uh, mainly false. Yeah, suggest that particularly then uh, didn't uh, flow uh, collect. Yeah, and uh, it is remain stable. Also, we study stabi uh, stability particle size. Yeah, stability of particle size. I don't know why is this. Uh, not uh, appeared uh, in full uh, slide. Maybe the design is not really correct. Then, um, as a conclusion, yeah, based on our study, I can uh, conclude that uh, pronizons were prepared successfully yeah, and uh, proved to enhance the biofluidity of axial vanac, yeah, and uh, um, uh, without uh, considering uh, any type of carrier, yeah. For all carriers, yes, all carriers, so that the axolotl-phenac uh, uh, biofluidity um, increase. Yeah, and the comparison between the three different carriers, yeah, revealed that the appropriate uh, uh, ness of them, yeah, but glucose uh, got the the better, yeah, based on our um, analysis, yeah. And um, general dose of oxycodone 100 uh, milligram can be uh, decreased, yeah, which will decrease in GIT adverse effect associated with NSAID, yeah, and hence increase the patient compliance. And uh, with regard to the uh, release study, yeah, pedometer is more reliable yeah, in predicting in vivo release of uh, our uh, formulation. I would like to acknowledge uh, our collaborator, Dr. Anna Samor from College of Pharmacy Dubai, Dubai and Dr. Bapadia Katerji from the Department of Pharmaceuticals, uh, Mumbai, India. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. I will uh, return it to Toreli. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your great lecture, Prof. Taher. We really appreciate that you are being here to share your expertise with us on the topic of, uh, which is uh, new for me also, pronisomal delivery of acyclofenac. Thank oh. you very much, Prof. Okay, for the next, we will go to the third lecture of this plenary session will be given by Dr. Clinical Pharmacy, Apotheca Dedi Almasti, MSE from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. Dr. Dedi Almasti holds his PhD degree on 2011 from the University Science Malaysia. And on 2001, uh, his magister degree from the Department of Pharmacy Institute Technology, Bandung. And then for the work experiences currently, Dr. Dedi Almasdi is our vice dean, three of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. And then for the publication, Dr. Dedi Almasdi already have published a very uh, many, many uh, article and journal for the latest one on 2021, this currently, uh, the title is the, Diver the, the Differences of Using Antibiotic Before and After Antimicrobial Resistance Control Program, PPRR, at RSUP Dr. M. Jamil Padang. And then also on 2019, evaluation and development of annual drug provided planning at the Rio Island Province Pharmaceutical Installation. 
All right. On this event, Dr. Dedi will talk about pharmacy's response to the sign and symptom of mild uh, min of the minor illness evidence from community pharmacy practice. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we welcome Dr. Dedi Almasti, we want to remind you again that during this session, if you have question and to the speaker, you can write the question in the chat room available, and then you can mention to which speaker you are giving the question to. The answer will be given by the speaker directly on the chat room or the in the Q and A session later on. All right. Uh, without any further ado, now please help me to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Dedi Almasdi, MSc PhD, to be on the screen to deliver the plenary lecture. To Dr. Dedi Almasdi, the time is yours. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Moderator, uh, for this introduction. Uh, and so, you may... Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be here with all of you in ICC SCP 2021. Uh, on this stand, I would like to share about uh, 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 pharmacist response to send and symptom uh, of disease evident from uh, community ph pharmacy practice. Uh, outline of our presentation are first, I talk about pharmacy practice evolution, and second, uh, we talk about clinical pharmacy practice in community pharmacy setting, and then uh, uh, I will I will share uh, about some activity, uh, some research uh, uh, I have uh, uh, did related to sign and symptom of disease uh, in community pharmacy setting. If we talk uh, about uh, pharmacy practice, it is already go through for a long time. In general, we can uh, divide it into three era. Uh, the first is the classical era, which uh, pharmacy service focus on drug dispensing and compounding. In this era, pharmacists in pharmacy prepare drug according to medical doctor prescription, make doctor form which ready to use by fashion from the uh, natural or synthetic uh, material, uh, material. In this era, pharmacy looks like a small laboratory which have uh, many instruments and apparatus for 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 make the dosage, dosage form, uh, and then as the roofing sign of technology, uh, pharmacy practice come to industrial era. In this era, drug compounding that uh, made by pharmacists in a pharmacy before take offer by industry, so. Uh, this make pharmacists rule in pharmacy just to distribute uh, uh, medicine yeah. by uh, medicine from pharmaceutical or seller and distribute it to patient. All condition uh, drift clinical era uh, in pharmacy practice to come. Uh, there is uh, some factors uh, uh, drifting. Uh, clinical pharmacy, uh, clinical pharmacy. Yeah. As we know, uh, expenses in health science and technology uh, lead to drug and drug information booming happen. In other hand, uh, there was no unresponsive of healthcare system to ensure safety of drug use. As we know, physician uh, focus on diagnosis and therapy, the diagnosis and treatment of disease, uh, other health professional like uh, nurse uh, have had inadequate knowledge uh, because because uh, uh, see or 
uh, uh, he focus uh, to uh, nursing uh, nursing nursing care. Uh, pharmacists have a very educated uh, about medicine. Uh, pharmacists uh, will learn many things related to uh, medicine, uh, but not implement Intent, uh, not implemented in practice. Yeah. So no one is full, full responsible to uh, for safety drug use in society. Uh, 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 all this condition uh, lead to uh, many uh, drug uh, drug related problem in uh, society. Yeah. In in line with the increasing drug related problem in uh, society, there is increasing of uh, awareness and public expectation on pharmacy service. Uh, so respond to this condition, uh, clinical pharmacy come to answer this uh, problem. Uh, here, uh, uh, In this slide, we can see uh, evolution of uh, clinical pharmacy practice. Yeah. Uh, in early beginning, pharmacy practice promote rational drug use uh, in hospital setting. But now, uh, we know uh, the problem of medicine. Medicine uh, drug related, uh, we, uh, uh, we call drug related problem is not not happen in uh, hospital pharmacy, but uh, uh, also happen in all of health sector. Uh, health sector, uh, uh, community uh, community and public 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 health setting. So uh, then clinical pharmacy practice uh, move from hospital pharmacy setting to community pharmacy setting. And public health setting. This uh, scenario uh, uh, scenario health service uh, uh, health care system. Yeah? We can see in uh, uh, in uh, health uh, health care system. We 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 know the two main uh, main uh, main activity. Pre uh, they are preventive promoting and curative rehabilitative. Uh, preventive uh, preventive we uh, discuss uh, uh, in public health and curative rehabilitative they are two, uh, two types is primary care in indonesia also uh, called pelayanan dasar and uh, then if uh, primary care not uh, not success uh, uh, the uh, patient uh, then they are referred to secondary tertiary care uh, uh, tertiary care ter secondary or tertiary care uh, Indonesia we call pelayanan lanjutan, uh, pelayanan lanjutan. Now in parallel in uh, his uh, uh, pharmacy practice also uh, COVID three the uh, three of the area this area uh, in hospital pharmacy setting in community pharmacy setting and in society we call public health setting. There is a uh, uh, type uh, pharmacy practice. Uh, we, uh, can we uh, see in uh, UK? Yeah? Uh, uh, in this uh, slide, we we can see there is there is uh, three type, types of uh, pharmacies in uh, clinical pharmacies clinical. Uh, clinical pharmacy practice in uh, UK. The first is community pharmacy practice. Uh, practice. Uh, the practice setting is uh, primary care. Uh, practice location is uh, pharmacy. And example of activity is uh, medication uh, review. Yeah. And second, uh, <laughs> type is uh, hospital pharmacies. Uh, the, pharma the practice setting is secondary care. Uh, Practice location is hospital, and example of activity is drug therapy, drug therapy and uh, effect drug reaction monitoring. And uh, this type uh, types uh, uh, is a uh, public health pharmacies. Uh, 
uh, well, the, the pharmacy setting is public health care and practice uh, location is general practice or society and uh, example of entity is block development of uh, prescribing, uh, prescribing policy. There is a clinical pharmacy uh, practice uh, in uh, some, uh, some activity uh, of clinical pharmacy practice in community pharmacy. Uh, like uh, dispensing and compounding, drug information and counseling, self medication advisor, exploring the signs and symptoms of mineral illness, smoking cessation program, uh, immunization, uh, uh, body weight management, uh, etc. Yeah. So for uh, today we uh, we will dis uh, we will discuss about self medicine. Uh, self medication. Uh, uh, as we know, uh, self medication uh, commonly conduct in society, especially to uh, treat of mineral illness. The this uh, 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 this style, this effort, influenced by improving the public knowledge related health care and availability of product in health service. Yeah. So there is. Uh, Factors that contribute to self medication. We can see uh, many factors uh, can uh, this, uh, can this uh, contribute to self medication, yeah? like uh, demographic characteristic, psychology and behavior, accessibility and availability of uh, to help 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 economy, then product attitude and belief. Education and information, and uh, advent on uh, advanced of, of health system. But unfortunately, uh, in practice, self in a self medical uh, practice uh, by community, uh, uh, many have uh, uh, many have drug uh, medication related problem. Uh, many many medication uh, uh, related problem happen. And uh, uh, a study report that 20% of drug related emission to hospital uh, caused by medication related, uh, this uh, medication related problem. So uh, there is a community pharmacy role in self medication. First is to ensure that self medication practice is safe and appropriate. So for this, uh, uh, as pharmacists, we we need to explore uh, sin, uh, sin of uh, and symptom of disease uh, of uh, sin, uh, sin, uh, sin and symptom of disease. Uh, this, the patient sin, uh, sin, uh, sin of uh, symptom of disease. Yeah. And second, we ensure safe cost storage and disposal of medicine. Uh, ensure that medicine for one should not be uh, used by another person. And then collaboration with prescriber. And report and at the adverse declaration. So, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, as a, a self medication and pharma advisor, pharmacists should have patients to use OTC or that they counter medicine safely uh, and effectively. So, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 this task uh, need uh, we uh, we to explore the sign and symptom of disease. We must interview the patient about determinant of sign and symptom, current disease, disease state, other medication treatment, yeah, patient risk factor, and etc. So uh, the problem, uh, 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 special, uh, so far in community pharmacy, especially in developing countries, there's no information uh, about drug induced symptom in community pharmacy, classification of symptom, and medical related problem. So, uh, objective uh, our study, our project is to uh, explore self medication related problem on the community pharmacy in, in community pharmacy. So, uh, community will seek to assist their problem to community pharmacies. Uh, the study sent. Uh, we we develop a, a, a research uh, the, with a study and explorative study 
uh, with structured interview approach. Uh, we uh, uh, use the protocol of study uh, first with development of study instrument, and then with development of sin and symptom criterion, criterion and uh, assessment of uh, medication induced basin system, and then we assessment a sin, a sin and symptom classification, and then we assessment the medical related problem, and then, then last not least, we uh, anal, anal, uh, 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 conduct the data analysis. There is a, a flow of study, yeah, yeah? Uh, to construct, uh, to customer, uh, for customer, for customer yeah, uh, came to pharmacies, uh, we select uh, uh, if, uh, uh, where is uh, he or she uh, 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 matching with uh, 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 inclusion uh, exclusion criteria. So uh, if you see or he uh, uh, matching with as, uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria, we invite uh, uh, he uh, they to uh, to join the, uh, with reset uh, with, uh, uh, with with concern form, and then we uh, interview we interview the uh, customer uh, about set and symptom exploration and the medical histories, uh, medic medication histories and uh, present medication. Uh, for this uh, interview, we do develop uh, a a questionnaire and data, 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 uh, data, uh, uh, and, uh, data form, data collection form, yeah. And then after that, uh, we uh, analyze uh, the symptom symptom uh, uh, is the is the is the, is the, is, the, is the, uh, indu, uh, induced by drug. And then we classify the symptom into serious uh, disease, uh, serious disease problem or minor uh, illness problem. Yeah, uh, and then uh, the result of uh, uh, classification we 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 we, uh, we conduct the uh, we conduct final assessment, and then we determine the medical related problem for all uh, all uh, customer. Uh, come to the pharmacies. Yeah. For drug induced analysis, uh, drug induced analysis, we use Naranjo algorithm, but uh, not all of uh, uh, question, questionnaire or item for uh, in Naranjo algorithm can 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 operational. And for classification, uh, serious disease uh, for minor illness, we develop a criteria. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, the flow of uh, uh, interview we uh, uh, we conduct eh? uh, uh, related to uh, demogra demographic uh, characteristics. Uh, there's uh, five question uh, related uh, same education problem. There, there is uh, eight question, and then related to sign and symptom exploration. There is nine question. The, the related to medical and social history, the, there is uh, one question, and other customer condition, uh, five question. Uh, there is data collection form uh, for uh, to document it all uh, ensure uh, uh, ensure uh, uh, patient ensure uh, patient patient ensure. Now for classification, uh, serious disease for. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a sign and symptom uh, covered by a customer uh, at pharmacy. Yeah, this. So, so uh, 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 we 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 develop uh, criteria to determine uh, what is uh, the symptom is uh, serious disease. Yeah, uh, for all uh, all. Uh, send and symptom in uh, community uh, community pharmacy like this uh, a constipation already used laxative for more than uh, seven day uh, pregnant under uh, undergone a crostomy or elistomy 
have a medical condition that could be responsible for constipation, have abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, taking a prescription medication that causes constipation, rectal bleeding, uh, a sudden change in bowel habit that uh, has persisted for more than two weeks, already used laxative uh, with no result, and under eight uh, the, the, of two years. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is an uh, example for constipation. And uh, we, 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 uh, uh, we do for all signs and symptoms in uh, community pharmacy uh, uh, like this. Uh, there is analysis data. Uh, there is uh, independent variable, like demographic characteristics, some addiction pattern, uh, the product I have purchased in pharmacy, the product had been used for uh, before come to the pharmacy, the product had been using in the day came to pharmacy, send and symptom characteristic, medical histories, and other conditions this customer. The dependent variable are send and symptom classification and medical related problem. This is a static analysis. Yeah, men are capacity statistic for uh, capacity uh, for the agreement uh, with the panel and logistic regression uh, and logistic regression we conduct to uh, determine this factor of uh, medical research problem and uh, serious disease. The result of the, uh, our uh, study is uh, there are 381 customers invited, but just uh, 285 customers agree. So the response rate is uh, seven, uh, seven, 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 74%. Uh, there is a uh, 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 the product purchased uh, and used by customer, the product purchased at the pharmacy, all the patient uh, purchased the uh, pro, uh, uh, medicine in pharmacy, uh, main of uh, the product is 1.27. Other, other product used seven day prior of visit, yeah. uh, 100 and uh, Second to uh, patient report uh, uh, use uh, other product uh, seven day prior to visit uh, with the main 1.49% uh, uh, product and other product use uh, and on the visit uh, 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 13 patient report use other product on the uh, day visit to pharmacy. Yeah. There is product classification, poison medicine, OTC medicine, OTC medicine, vitamin mineral, herbal medicine, and others. Yes. So uh, there is self medication pattern of the study. We can see in uh, this slide, we can see factor that uh, influence of customer decision to buy the product. Mayor of a uh, report that uh, experience of pre, uh, previous me, uh, previous medicine. So. And medical doctor uh, and uh, and medical doctor. So uh, about customer experience to using product, uh, uh, many of patient report that second time uh, or more. Yeah. So uh, it may it uh, it's mean that the uh, patient come to pharmacy to refill the past uh, uh, product they they uh, they they buy. So about, about customer attitude to take product. Uh, as directed on uh, on the label, uh, 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 50, uh, 50, uh, 50, uh, 52 patient, uh, percent patient report always. Uh, and then uh, question about customer action. If the product did not produce the additional effect, 75% uh, uh, report stop the product and seeking the doctor. Yes. Now, uh, when uh, we analyze uh, uh, drug-related problem, uh, we we find that uh, uh, six, six, seven pa, uh, patient uh, or customer uh, experience to uh, medic medication-related uh, uh, problem. So this uh, slide we can see. Uh, the analysis of customer sign and symptom. Uh, 
uh, there is uh, same symptom in a uh, the same symptom were induced by medicine uh, men, uh, just uh, report uh, just, we, 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 we can we can we can determine just uh, possible but not all but uh, uh, like I I, I mean uh, before uh, not all the uh, Naranjo algorithm, uh, algorithm uh, cannot uh, implement uh, uh, implemented them. So related to sign and symptom classification, uh, 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 twenty four of percent of uh, customer uh, 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 suffer, uh, suffer uh, for, uh, uh, from the serious disease, and uh, uh, as we uh, compare. Uh, the, with the medical doctor uh, as panelist and senior pharmacist as panelist uh, and uh, also uh, senior pharmacist sebagai uh, pharmacist, we can uh, we uh, re, the result of and uh, 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 zero point six uh, uh, zero point six. Uh, it uh, means the 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 uh, 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 we claim uh, we uh, the this is class uh, the uh, this is class uh, sign and symptom this is class but uh, 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 have the same opinion same opinion same opinion with uh, medical doctor uh, and senior pharmacist. There is a uh, uh, association of sign and symptom. Uh, with demographic characteristic, uh, we we see the, uh, we, we can see just age, age and level education and co occupation uh, significant different uh, different uh, for uh, yeah, for minor illness and minor disease. Eh? There is the same symptom uh, association with same and symptom of uh, study subject. Uh, uh, who use a uh, product up to seven day period of visit. There's no, 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 no significant difference. There is a uh, association of sign and symptom classification uh, uh, to, uh, to, to symptom, sign and symptom characteristic. We can see uh, all of uh, uh, question uh, uh, have the uh, uh, significant uh, statistically uh, st uh, statistically uh, for minor illness and serious disease, the, like uh, duration of the disease uh, of symptom, intensive of uh, severity and other symptom, aggravating factors, uh, really factor uh, customer has uh, experienced to see symptom uh, before. Customer and consult the symptoms to medical doctor. There is logistic relation output for uh, uh, risk factor of serious disease. So uh, we can see uh, all, the, uh, all uh, uh, and then is the uh, result from uh, uh, characteristic of uh, the medical related problem. Uh, related problem. Yeah, we see. Uh, uh, Forty-seven percent of customer uh, have a medical reason problem, and 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 the types of medical medical problem are uh, not appropriate of drug, net additional of drug, frequency or duration not enough, potential IDR, not legal of drug, no clear indication but use the drug, inappropriate duplication of drug, dose too high or low. Potential interaction, clear indication, but no drug manifestation of ADRs. Yeah. This is association of customer medical related problem to demographic characteristic. So uh, we can see uh, just uh, age, uh, uh, just uh, age and uh, level of education is uh, statistically uh, significant. Yeah. Uh, and this association with a medical problem uh, study subject yeah? asso asso association uh, of medical problem of the uh, of the study subject yeah? uh, 
we just uh, uh, we, we we can see just study subject took uh, took the product uh, product as directed uh, the label and study subject have seen a symptom classification uh, the uh, st uh, um, uh, st uh, statistically uh, different. Eh? Uh, so uh, this association association of the study subject uh, of the character problem, we can see uh, the product purchase in uh, the pharmacy, uh, the study subject use product seven day uh, prior to the of uh, the, the, the come to pharmacy and study subjects use the other product on the uh, visit. Uh, uh, then uh, association of medical related problem to medical condition. Uh, uh, can we see the study subject have other than just uh, study subject have any medication allergy uh, allergy uh, uh, significant statistically. So uh, from the logistic uh, regression, uh, just at uh, a serious disease and use uh, uh, any product before before come to pharmacy uh, uh, as a risk factor for uh, customer uh, medical related problem. So uh, in conclusion, uh, among the customer in community pharmacy. Uh, 46 seven uh, uh, percent uh, uh, of them had a medical problem 24 uh, of them we we classify as serious disease that required to refer to medical doctor and uh, they this conversation has fairly high level agreement with the registered medical medical doctor so uh, in uh, uh, from the, the, the this study we we can see the pharmacist can contribute for uh, uh, respond uh, sign and symptom of disease in community pharmacy uh, pharmacy. I think it is uh, good uh, information uh, to develop uh, to uh, improve the rule of pharmacies in community pharmacy setting uh, in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Pumbunator. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Dedi. We really appreciate that you have shared with us your uh, research experience in terms of community pharmacy practice. All right, for the next, we will go to the fourth lecture in this plenary session. will be given by Dr. Amrizal M. Noor, MSc, PhD, from Department of Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Public Health, Kuwait University. For uh, Dr. Amriza M. Noor, MSc, PhD, he held his PhD degree on 2007 in the field of the public health from the Faculty of Medicine, National University Malaysia, UKM Kuala Lumpur. And currently the position of the Dr. Amriza M. Noor is uh, the Associate Professor in Inter National Center of Cosmic and Clinical Coding, ITCC, and Community Medicine Department, Faculty of Medicine. And uh, Prof now is also the Assistant Professor in the Department of Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Public Health, Kuwait University. For the patent on copyright, uh, Dr. Amrizal got several patents, wow, oral health casmic system on 2019 in ACBG casmic grouper software for Indonesia, 2015, my drug TM Casmic Cloud 2015, and uh, another one, you know, CBG, my DRG Casmic Grouper software. Wow, it's very fantastic. And the, for, uh, for the publication, Dr. Ambriza already have many uh, publication in the many uh, journal. For example, the, um, the 2020 with uh, Norhati Hassan and Said Muhammad al Junit and uh, Dr. Ambrizal itself. The title is Development of Inpatient Cost and Nursing Service Weight in a Tertiary Hospital in Malaysia, uh, published in BMC Health Service Research. And uh, for the research field, Dr. Ambrizal, uh, 
expertise in the survey of primary care physician, PCP, in Kuwait on colorectal cancer screening, perception, recommendation, and practices. Collaborative research of Department of Primary Health Care, MUH Kuwait, and Faculty of Public Health Kuwait University to 2020 onward as a co researcher. And also, uh, onward, the research. Now, uh, going on, economic burden of diabetic mellitus in state of Kuwait, collaborative research between Faculty of Pharmacy and Faculty of Public Health Kuwait. All right, on this lecture, Dr. Amriza will talk about hospital cost containment using the CASMIC system in social health insurance, the role of pharmacies using inner CBGs in Indonesia. Without any further ado, now please help me to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Amrizal M. Noor, MSc, PhD, to be on the screen to deliver the plenary lecture. To Dr. Amrizal, the time and screen is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Yali. Um, uh, for introdu introducing me to uh, participants. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm now undergoing uh, uh, hotel quarantine in Jakarta. So um, my lecture today, I um, maybe yeah, using uh, video uh, presentations because uh, because of I have had a problem here internet connection. Okay, so sometime on and off. So I hope uh, everyone can enjoy my uh, video presentation. Uh, thank you. Okay, Prof. Good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank and much appreciate for inviting me as a speaker to even organize the Faculty of Pharmacy, UNAN and especially to Prof. Dian Handayani as the chairperson of this conference. My topic is hospital cost containment using the cosmic payment and social health insurance, the rules of pharmacies in inner CBGs, Indonesia. The outline of my presentation, I will start with the introduction and then continue with the reasons for rising healthcare costs, then why provider payment is important, and then what is CASMIC system or inner CBGs. And lastly, the role of pharmacy's implementation of inner CBGs in era JKN and conclusion. As we know that the healthcare industry is continuing to evolve rapidly nationally and internationally. Its evolution is being driven by many factors, such as a growing populations, managed care, technological innovation, many expansions by major providers. Of course, all this evolution require an ever increasing input of resources, but the problem is the resources are finite or limited. So we have at least two solutions here. Don't allocate the ever increasing resources or use these resources efficiently. Talking about the total health expenditure as a percentage of GDP in selected OECD or developed countries in 1970 till 2016, we can see in this line graph that USA is the highest total health expenditure around 17% of the GDP compared to the another OECD countries. On average, around 9% of the GDP in other yeah, developed countries. How about the total health expenditure in Indonesia? Healthcare expenditure is 2.9% of GDP in year 2018, and USA around 16.8% in 2019. 
So healthcare expenditure in Indonesia is lower than non-OECD countries, such as the China, around 5.1% yeah, of the GDP, the healthcare expenditure. In India, around 3.6% of GDP. So what is the, uh, the, 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 the percentage of pharmaceutical expenditure of uh, the total health expenditure in OECD countries? We can see in this diagram that the highest percentage of the pharmaceutical expenditure of the total health expenditure was South Korea, 24% of the THE in year 2000 and followed by Czech Republic, around 23% of the THE. Regarding the percentage of the drug expenditure of the THE, yeah, or total high expenditure in 2010, we can see in this diagram that Spain was the highest drug expenditure, around 22% of the total health expenditure, compared to another uh, developed countries. France around 21%, Germany around 19%, yeah? and then US around 13% uh, yeah? uh, the drug expenditure in 2010. In Malaysia, the pharmaceutical suppliers and operating expenditures uh, from 1997 to uh, 2009, yeah, was around 17.5% of the total MOH operating expenditure. How about in our country in Indonesia, we can see in this table that the drug expenditure of the total health expenditure in the year 2012 was 23.2%. To, uh, in 2011, 24.7%. Yeah, and then in, to, in year 2010, around 25.7%. On average, around 24% for three years from 2010 until 2012. There are many factors that can be the reason for rising healthcare costs. We can say first, uh, investing in new technology. Yeah, for example, MRI, organ transplant, CT scan, renal dialysis, patented drugs to treat HIV AIDS, yeah, and etc. The, the, second, the second one, increasing the population aging. You know, yeah, increasing the number of uh, elderly people. Yeah. If the elderly people admitted uh, in the ward, and seeking the doctors, yeah, they 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 have yeah they have more diseases to be treated by the doctors, not only one disease, yeah. Uh, for example, for the comorbidity, yeah, they they have another disease, uh, uh, such as the hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, and etc. The third one, epide epidemiological translation, yeah, see if the disease pattern from non-communicable diseases yeah, to, uh, uh, from a communicable disease to non-communicable diseases. So what are examples of the communicable disease uh, such as uh, cholera, uh, typhoid and malaria. Now the, the disease pattern changed to the uh, chronic diseases. Yeah? Chronic disease because of the unhealthy lifestyle such as the cancer diseases, yeah? diabetes, mellitus, ischemic heart disease, coronary, coronary heart disease, and etc. The fourth one is medic medicalization of the social problem. For example, smoking cigarette, um, and then uh, drug abuse, and etc. The fifth one, rising yeah, expectation of the public. For example, expect uh, better hotel services in the hospital, meaning that need more additional services. The sixth um, one is system of healthcare financing 
without proper cost control mechanism. For example, if you use fee-for-service in payment method to, to hospital, I think it is not uh, efficient because they based on evidence base yeah, uh, from many research yeah, in WHO, yeah, um, research uh, focus on fee-for-service in hospital uh, level. The, 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 last one, the last one is unwise spending by governments, for example, uh, build more uh, new hospital, more hospital, because we'll increase, uh, we'll, we'll rise yeah, the healthcare costs, the healthcare costs, yeah, especially for the, the healthcare budget. Now we are moving, you know, why payment method is important. Every country or policymaker should decide and select the best method, uh, payment method for cost containment. So the reason why payment method is important first, we can select the payment method for cost containment measures. We can measure, we can control the cost and then improve the efficiency. The second one, yeah, uh, influence provision of the services. So we can uh, choose uh, among uh, various payment method, yeah, payment method to explore, yeah, to implement the incentive and this in, this and uh, this incentive, this incentive, and also uh, whether we can uh, focus on preventive or corrective care, yeah, or we 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 focus on basic health services. The third one. Yeah, influence the quality of care, technical quality, client satisfaction, and of course, viability of the health financing scheme. So we can decide, we can explore and decide one payment method that we can use. Uh, and then we make sure that we, uh, the, the health financing scheme that we, we use can survive uh, for the long time. There are two types of payment methods, retrospective payment, meaning, meaning that the payment is made after provision of services. And the second is prospective payment. That payment is made before provision of services. Retrospective payment include fee for service, payment per atomized bill, payment per deem. The strength of this payment method is favored by providers and the weaknesses are prone to supply induced demand. The doctors and nurse will, uh, uh, what we call encourage, will encourage uh, patient and family patient to do unnecessary investigation and unnecessary, unnecessary pres uh, prescription and et cetera. So the other thing is uh, high administrative administrative costs. In terms of prospective payment method, include here capitation payment, global budget, cash payment. The strength are good cost containment and low administrative costs. And the weaknesses are need high technical capacity to develop, reduce providers' clinical freedoms and need to legislate. Now we are moving to the cashmic system. So this is very important uh, cashmic system that we are uh, discussing today. Yeah, what is the cashmic system? Mix in Indonesian language campuran, yeah? gabungan, case meaning that refer to the patient, yeah, patient diagnosis in hospital. So. Uh, cosmic mix of patient. So cosmic system is classification of patient treatment episode designed to create classes which are relatively homogeneous in respect of the resources use and which contain patient with the similar uh, clinical uh, characteristic. So patient in one group, patient in one group, yeah has the similar uh, two uh, clinical characteristic. 
meaning that it has the two uh, same uh, characteristic. One is homogeneous in resources use, meaning that uh, economically similar, and then similar in clinical characteristic, medically similar. This one example of casmic classification in NRCBG Indonesia. We can see in this table that uh, uh, different average length of stay and average cost for different group of patient classification. We have group classifications, acute myocardial, myocardial infarction, uh, mild, uh, and then angina pectoris and chest pain, mild, and then heart failure, uh, mild. Okay, we can see here that uh, uh, all three groups has the same CVT level, CVT level one. Yeah, acute myocardial, myocardial infarction or MI, the average cost five million rupees. And then angina pectoris and chest pain, the average cost of treating patient four million yeah, rupees and then heart failure around 5.2 million rupees. Casmix actually has been implemented and migrated to European countries from America, uh, from USA, yeah? such as to the Germany, Australia, uh, France, uh, Holland, yeah? Italy, Portugal, United Kingdom, yeah? and also uh, migrated to the North America, yeah? such as Canada. Yeah? And then South America, Brazil, Costa Rica, Chile, and Uruguay, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Asia, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, and of course, uh, Indonesia. There are three main benefits of using CASMIC system for efficiency, for quality, and intelligent data. First, the system will help yeah, the hospital to enhance in efficiency by providing the mechanism to monitor cost of each patient treated. This is for efficiency. The second one for the quality, improved in quality. Casmic system was proven to be an important tool to enhance quality of care. The outcome of care such as death and mortality rate and complication rate can be compared between different doctors who manage the cases. So benchmarking of outcome of care can be easily done with the CASMIC system. The third one, intelligent data, the use of CASMIC system will also help to improve the quality of data and information in the hospital. So data produced by CASMIC system contain yeah, intelligent information diagnosis and procedures done on the patient can be used yeah, for good decision making by hospital managers, clinician, and health policy makers. Professor, origin of the CASMIC uh, groupers, yeah? Professor Fetter and John Thompson from Yale University has developed the CASMIC system for quality and efficiency in healthcare services since 19, 1967. The first DRG yeah, for the origin of the CASPIC group, uh, we call H4 DRG. USA used this CASPIC system for provider payment mechanism yeah, for poor people through Medicare program, same with the JKN or BPGS. In addition, they revived the revise into EPDRG, all patient DRG, and then all countries especially developed countries try to adopt it. The system for quality efficiency for providing payment mechanism or for budget allocation. UN UCBG developed by researcher from UKM together with the UN UIGS United Nation. And uh, I have um, uh, involved, yeah, I've been involved in developing yeah, uni, UN UCBG group uh, when I uh, uh, when I work in uh, United Nations before, around uh, four years. So this UNU CBG group has been implemented in various countries, such as in Asia, 
uh, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, of course, in Middle East, yeah, uh, in Kuwait, yeah, uh, UAE, uh, Saudi uh, Arabia, Iran, and in South America, in Uruguay and Chile. The history of casmics in Indonesia yeah, uh, started actually in 2006 when Dr. Farid was the Almarhum, yeah, the Director of Medical Services Division in MOH Indonesia in 2006, yeah, met MOU with UKM to develop and implement the CASPIC system in Indonesia. In January 2019, MOH Indonesia started implement in a DRG using IRDRG Grouper. October 2010, Changed the uh, MOH uh, Indonesia changed the Casmic Grouper from InnaDRG to InnaCBGs using UNU Casmic uh, Grouper. And end of uh, to year 2012, launching the new InnaCBGs tariff. And June 2013, launched InnaCBG with the seven special CMG, including special uh, CMG for expensive drug. So this involved. Uh, uh, actively, yeah, pharmacies in uh, creating yeah, the special CMG for drug. Finally, January 2014, President uh, SBY launched in a CBG yeah, for universal health coverage yeah, till now. So, in a CBG in Indonesia, CASMIC system is implemented in Indonesia under JAM CASMAS, Jaminan Kesehatan Masyarakat, Social High Insurance Scheme for the Poor uh, since 2006. Used by around 1,350 public and private hospitals, coverage around 75 million people. Since 2010, NICBG was implemented to replace INADRG. NICBG will be used to cover all other social insurance schemes by 2014 under plan for universal coverage and cover 240 million people. National Health Insurance Agency, BPJS, will coordinate all uh, social insurance program in Indonesia. If we look at in this uh, 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 diagram, yeah, in this graph, yeah, uh, fee for service payment method. Yeah, I think this is the common uh, payment method the uh, majority used before. Yeah. In fee-for-service payment method, if more type of services and activity done yeah, for treating patient, you get more income. But if in CASMIC system, yeah, hospital provider will be paid using in a CBG tariff with flat rate or fixed rate of tariff. That's why hospital should implement the cost containment method. For example, angina pectoris, yeah, group of diseases. Average length of stay, six days. If doctors keep patient, yeah, treat patient until 30 days, until 60 days, the BPJS will pay hospital only, yeah, only for six days. Yeah, for example, four million rupees. If let's say doctors keep patient until 30 days or two months and etc., the PPJS will pay only yeah, for fixed rate, yeah, four million rupees. So that's why yeah, we need yeah, we need to avoid unnecessary treatment, unnecessary investigation, and then un unnecessary uh, prescription. Yeah, prescription or medication to make sure that we can uh, provide the service with a good uh, quality. So the rule of the pharmacies, uh, traditionally the rule of the pharmacy has shifted yeah, uh, from the classical, yeah, traditional, yeah, lake, stick and poor dispensary rule to being an integrated member of the high care team. Yeah, directly involved in patient care. So pharmacy is part of the important healthcare team in hospital level. Regarding the cost saving, yeah, 
in proper use of medication in US, in USA, in America, annually. The treatment cost of chronic condition around 1.7 trillion US dollar. Okay. And then um, around 0.75% of every spending, yeah, one dollar. And then more than one five billion preventable medication related to adverse events. And 290 billion US dollar is mostly avoidable cost. So we can save yeah, the cost 290 billion US dollar if we can avoid improper use of yeah, medication. What are the rules of the pharmacies in inner CBGs? In implementation of inner CBGs yeah, in era JKN, Jaminan Kesihatan National, yeah, uh, the, the organizer yeah, uh, is uh, BPGS. Yeah? We can define six rules of the pharmacies in inner CBGs. Establishing special CMG in inner CBGs, active participation in developing clinical pathway, promote generic prescribing, support development of pharmacoeconomic guideline, promote evidence-based practice, and monitoring of inner CBGs yeah, uh, implementation. The first rules of pharmacies in inner CBG is establishing yeah, special CMGs in inner CBGs. Pharmacies is involved in developing criteria for special drugs, very expensive drug. Yeah. Pharmacies help National Center for Casmic in Ministry of Health Indonesia to identify the expensive drug list. And then uh, MOH yeah, will decide it, will decide it yeah, to uh, choose yeah, from uh, various expensive drug, which drug is very frequent, very expensive that can link to the inner CBG group. Provide information on drug costs. This is one of the rule, yeah, and the first rule, and monitor drug utilization, whether the clinician for the evidence base yeah, medicine or not. And pharmacies also identify abuse and unnecessary use of the drug. One of the example in UKM hospital, the percentage of pharmacy costs around 14% of the total cost of treating patient in medical ward. The second rule of pharmacies in inner CBG is uh, active participation in developing clinical pathway. Clinical pathway is important component of CASMIC. Clinical pathway can help to reduce variation of care where all clinicians will follow the same CP for treating patient. CP can improve quality and efficiency of patient treatment. Similar objective with the CASMIC system. Criteria for selecting the certain diseases or condition for CP based on high cost and high volume of conditions or diseases. Pharmacists also can help in selecting the effective and efficient drug in, in developing CPs. And pharmacists will also involve in implementing and monitoring of CP for particular diseases or a condition. So what is the definition of the clinical pathway? Multidisciplinary plans or blueprint for a plan of care, of best clinical practice for specified groups of patients with particular diagnosis that aid in the coordination and del delivery of high quality of care. These are the example of CP that has been developed and implemented in UKM Medical Center. ST elevation myocardial, myocardial infarction, STEMI, 
with the PCI and thrombolysis, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, COPD, elective lower segment suicide injection, LSCS, and elective total knee replacement, yeah, uh, 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 T, uh, uh, TKR, yeah, TKR. If you look at in this table for three diseases using uh, clinical pathway implementation in UKM hospital, in, in UK America Center, we found that annual saving for CP implementation for STEMI PCI around 18,000, STEMI thrombolysis around 14,000, LSCS around 176,000, and COPD 44,000, and total cost saving if we implement three uh, diseases around 254,000. In terms of average length of stay between implementing clinical pathway without implementing clinical pathway, we found that yeah, average length of stay with clinical pathway 5.5 days is lower than without implementing, yeah, without implementing clinical pathway 8.1%. I share with you uh, one of uh, example of the capacity format day by day. So in red cycle, refer to task or responsibility for pharmacies day, day by day to make sure all type of drug given to patient based on evidence-based practice, evidence-based medicine. Finally, will give the great impact to the quality of uh, outcome of patient treatment. If we can work together in a healthcare team to make sure the quality of the uh, patient outcome. The third rule of pharmacy in, in RCBG is to promote generic prescribing. Pharmacists encourage clinicians to prescribe with a general generic drug, because if you use more generic drug, of course, we'll be lowering drug expenditure. We can save more money. Pharmacists can control moral hazard of providers, especially doctors in prescribing over a branded name. And pharmacists also provide greater access to essential, essential drug. I, I also share with you one of the research that has been done in UKM Medical Center prescribing practice and drug costs among cardiology cases in UKMMC. You can see here from the total 3,000 cardiology patients, 135 randomly selected for the review, 1,000 type of drug prescribed. Generic prescription rate is around 45.2%. Average number of drug prescribed is 7.6. And total drug cost is 28,879 Malaysian ringgit. And 90% of the cost is due to the branded drugs. 90% of the cost is due to the branded drug. We are moving to the prescribing practice and drug cost among cardiology cases in UKMMC. Generic prescription rate for using generic drug is lowest among specialists and consultants, around 31.68%, meaning that yeah, almost 69% using branded name of the drug. So that's why yeah, we need pharmacists to convince to promote uh, generic prescribing yeah, especially for the specialists, the senior specialists and consultant. Yeah? In Indonesia, we call the consultant. Yeah? Consulate. The percentage of the countries with the legal provision promote generic substitution in private sector in 2007, we found that the highest percentage was East Asia countries, followed by the Latin America and Caribbean and Sub-Saharan yeah, Africa. 
The fourth rule of pharmacies in, in ICBG is to support development of pharmacoeconomic guidelines. Pharmacies provide technical documents yeah, to guide economic evaluation of pharmaceuticals. And pharmacies also develop the uh, pharma, uh, pharmacoeconomic uh, guideline with participation of the stakeholders. Pharmacies assist in preparing supporting documents uh, for the drug. See the global scenario of pharmacoeconomic in Africa, Latin America, uh, North America, Asia, Europe, Oceania. So the publish of the uh, pharmacoeconomic recommendation, pharmacoeconomic guidelines, and also the submission of the guidelines in various countries. So what are the benefits of the pharmacoeconomic guidelines? Yeah. To standardize, yeah. first to standardize method approach of economic evolution. The second one to enhance quality of pharmacoeconomic data for the drug submission. The third one to promote use of local data in economic evolution studies. And last one to improve decision-making process, evidence based on uh, policy uh, decision. The fifth rule of pharmacies in, in RCBG is to promote evidence-based practice by applying research finding in daily patient, uh, patient care practice and in clinical decision-making. And then involve integrating the best available evidence with the clinical knowledge and expertise. So they communicate, they call so the uh, communication and uh, convene the clinician with evidence-based medicine and, and practice. The last rule of the patient uh, pharmacies in, in RCBG is to monitor uh, the in RCBG's implementation. Yeah. Uh, the first one is to evaluate the generic and unnecessary prescribing by doctors and clinical department using the casmic information. To monitor the expen expensive drug utilization by group of DR in RCBGs and doctors and also by clinical department. To monitor and involving in implementation of clinical pathway for uh, particular diseases or condition involved in developing and updating national in SVG tariff, especially for drug utilization, whether the government need yeah, to uh, increase the number of uh, special uh, drug uh, CMG or not, and monitoring and reporting drug safety and preparing budget for medication based on NSBG output. So in conclusions, yeah, the rise in healthcare costs is the major challenge for the health policy makers, both in developed and developing countries. Cost containment measures should be implemented to ensure sustainability of healthcare system. Pharmacies play an important role in implementing the NSBGs in GK and ERA especially in developing, updating the clinical pathway or tariff, and also reducing unnecessary prescription or cost saving. I think that's all my presentation uh, today. Um, if, uh, thank you very much for your attention. So I pass the, <clears throat> the session to the moderator again. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your awesome and inspiring lecture, Dr. Amrizal. Uh, we really appreciate that you have been here to share with us the topic on the hospital cost containment using the CASMIC system in social health insurance, the role of pharmacists using NACBGs in Indonesia. So with all the lecture given, now we come to the Q&A session. I will read the question from the Q&A panel and I will select it, the unanswer question and unredundant one from there. One second, I will check. Uh, since we have uh, earlier to finish the presentation from the, our respective uh, speaker, Maybe from uh, here, we can find uh, two questions 
to uh, Dr. Uikosa. Doctor, maybe you uh, can uh, answer this question directly. I will read the question again. Yeah, and um, could you please read my answer for the question? Okay, okay. Uh, so the question come from uh, Prof. Dian Handayani addressed to uh, Dr. Ekusa. Uh, dear Professor Ekusa, thanks so much for your valuable sharing. Solubility and dissolution rate of some API are successfully better after co-crystal formation. How about its pharmacological potency? Are co-crystal become better than before? So, uh, Dr. Ekusa, uh, I will write your answer or you can answer it directly. Okay, <laughs> okay, I will read my answer. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you for the good question. I think the co-crystal formation controls the properties of the solid and it is not directly related to the pharmacological potency. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an expert in pharmaceutics, uh, but I'm a member of the chemistry department, so I may not be able to give you an appropriate answer. But if you control the dissolution of the co-crystal, you will control the concentration of the drug in the blood, that is bioavailability. So co-crystal formation may also have a role in protecting uh, the API. If a basic molecule can use as a coforma the degradation of the API under acidic condition uh, can be inhibited. In addition, uh, today I showed you an example of drug-drug multi-component crystal. If the efficacy of one API can be enhanced by a coforma molecule, then uh, such co-crystallization may lead to improve efficacy. I think it is important to study uh, such formulation of API using co-crystal strategy. Thank you for your good question. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, another question also addressed to uh, Prof. Kusa from Prof. Dedi Primaputra. Dear Professor Hidehiro, thank you very much. Your research is very interesting and give us another idea for other mechanism to protect the important organic compounds. Do you do you any do you have any idea or suggestion to use crystal modification to protect the oxidation? For example, to protect catechin from oxidation. Thank you for the interesting question. As you asked, uh, co-crystal uh, preparation is also used to protect the compound. In today's talk, I showed you an example of protection of a drug that reacts with uh, visibilite irradiation. It is an example of epaurestat. I believe that oxidation of compound in the solid state can also be inhibited by co-crystal formation. There are several possible mechanisms for this. One is uh, that, um, as in today's lecture, co-crystallization can slow down the progress of the reaction in solid state by preventing the uh, deformation of molecule or a movement of molecule. That means co-crystallization can prevent a chemical reaction, any chemical reaction. So it can also reduce the number of molecules participating uh, by uh, reducing the number of compound ex exposed in a, a surface. Uh, if a particular uh, substituent ox oxidizes, it may be possible to inhibit such oxidation by um, having uh, that uh, substituent interact strongly with coforma. So if a uh, substituent and coforma interact strongly, the oxidation of this part is inhibited. I think so. So uh, I would be, it would be very interesting not only to create co-crystal, uh, but also to create complexes or salts uh, with alkali metal ions or metal ions. 
I remember one example. The oxidation of hydroquinone is inhibited by creating a co crystal with a surfactant. Such complex, I mean, co crystal have been put to a practical use as a skin whitening drugs. If you are thinking of oxidation in solution, as a co crystal may not be very useful, but co crystals with antioxidants is an interesting idea. Thank you for the interesting question. Thank you, uh, Prof. Ekusa. Uh, next, we have also the question from our Dean, Prof. Fatma Sri Wahyuni, addressed to Prof. Taher. Prof. Taher, uh, the question is, in your opinion or experiences, which one is more effective as drug delivery system in cell culture assay between liposomes or niosomes? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yevi. Actually, I already answered in chat room, but uh, I will try to uh, answer it again. Thank you, the Prof. Fatma Sri Wayuni. Uh, very uh, good question. Because uh, uh, when uh, we see the drug discovery and development chart, uh, for in vitro study, must be set out for the uh, uh, unformulated uh, uh, agent or drug. Uh, but after we do formulation, for example, uh, the the good question, example example is when uh, we uh, did uh, tablet formulation, it is quite impossible to revert. I mean, to return to in vitro again because must uh, you know uh, there'll be problem because in uh, for cell culture um, uh, uh, study, it is uh, water based uh, water based uh, because the cell is growing in the uh, water medium, uh, so. Uh, after we uh, do formulation, uh, the good uh, uh, step, yeah, next step should be in vivo, in vivo study. So uh, just to answer your question, uh, niosome I think is better because niosome is containing uh, surfactant that can uh, um, reduce the surface tension uh, and also to help uh, uh, the solubility of the drug and to reach the uh, cell surface. Uh, to give uh, uh, optimum interaction with uh, uh, the cell. Because uh, in, in an in vitro study, what we expect is uh, interaction between the drug uh, or agent with the cells, right? So uh, normally uh, we did it to naked yeah, or unfermented agent. And um, normally they have a problem with splitty. Uh, we just uh, dissolve them in the MSO, right? Uh, the, uh, the MSO yeah, to improve the solubility. So, uh this is the answer actually yeah we should move forward after we uh, do formulation we have to uh to do next step in, especially for in vivo using animal or maybe uh, to the human uh this that's all uh, uh my answer yeah okay thank you, thank you prof Taher. Uh, Yes. Okay. okay, the next question is come from uh, Mr. Abraham Simatupang. The question is addressed for Dr. Amrizal. I think the backbone of applying casmic system is also a good medical record. And unfortunately, this is still our main problem. Although by BPGS, this has been improving so far. So uh, what is your opinion, Dr. Amrizal? Yeah, thank you uh, for the for the uh, for the questions from who is the name is so from Abraham uh, Simatupang. Abraham eh? Simatupang. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the uh, I have involved yeah, in implementation of the casmic system in ICBGs in Indonesia since two thousand six. Until now, I'm still as a, uh, one of the consultants for NICBGs in Indonesia, in the Ministry of Health. And um, for the first stage, I, I found that um, uh, in, especially in hospital, yeah, hospital under Ministry of Health Indonesia, you know, like, um, Hospital uh, Jantung Harapan Kita, yeah? uh, RSCM, yeah, you know, I think say RCM, everyone uh, you know, uh, Hospital Karya di Semarang, Hospital Hasan Sadikin in Bandung, M Jamil, Hospital M Jamil in Padang. The problem in 
initial stage of implementation of the gas mix system or in CBDs because of incomplete documentation of patient. Yes. Um, yeah, of patient. Okay, so at least 14 variable data we need for a uh, grouping of patient into cash mix system. Uh, we call Indonesia in uh, CBGs. And one of the important uh, variable data that we need here, a clinical information. What is the clinical information? Diagnosis of patient. Yeah? This is diagnosis of patient. So they're very, very important because if we uh, doctors yeah, uh, took the wrong, yeah, took uh, to take the wrong, the wrong uh, diagnosis, main diagnosis or secondary diagnosis or uh, procedure and surgical procedure and or non-surgical procedure will affect yeah to the grouping of in CBGs and will affect to the the tariff. And the in a CBD tariff. But um, um, Minister, Ministry of Health of Indonesia yeah, uh, aware yeah, that uh, uh, the problem because of this is very important, the completeness of the data, especially the patient data, yeah, uh, will affect the grouping of in a CBD and will affect to, yeah, the tariff. Okay. So, uh, for example, some I I have uh, done a spot check in a, uh, a small uh, what we call I think it's, uh, under uh, hospital government in Indonesia, it's a hospital. Hmm? I I uh, I I have done the spot check, and then I check. Yeah, you know the resume medicine yeah, medical record. For one, uh, uh, I think uh, 10, 10 patients, I found that many of doctors in the resume, yeah, you know, the resume and literature summary only write, yeah, only wrote one diseases, meaning that one principal diagnosis. What is the other's uh, diagnosis? For example, uh, there's comorbidity and complication that they, they didn't uh, 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 write anything. Of a secondary and complication, so will affect the the tariff, the tariff, the, the grouping of patient will be uh, will be put in the CBT level one. Yeah, in Indonesia keparahan satu. Yeah, if we input secondary diagnosis, yeah, like hypertension, ischemic heart disease, or diabetes mellitus, this is the chronic disease. A company, yeah. By the acute cases, will increase the CBT level into CBT level two or three, yeah, where the tariff will increase higher. So that's why the very very important, yeah, completeness of uh, patient data. Well, uh, when we input in the case mix group. So what what are the um, the effort yeah, from the Minister of Health, they uh, plan yeah, they plan to do several training, yeah, several training um, regarding uh, workshop, yeah, workshop on uh, coding, yeah, course on coding, coding of ICD ten for diagnosis, coding uh, for ICD nine CM for surgical or non surgical procedure. So I think MOH. Uh, working yeah, together with the um, what we call a provincial yeah provincial health uh, uh, district yeah so already work together to conduct yeah, to, to conduct it, uh, several uh, training and workshop on uh, clinical coding I think uh, this is the, the the choice and the meaning that the, the effort from the Minister of Health inshallah in a in future, Will be, uh, uh, what we call will be uh, better. Yeah, will be better uh, in clinical coding and also uh, the computations uh, of medical record. I, I just I just mentioned that in the world we are Indonesia, the first country, yeah, the first country that uh, 
the participant, yeah, we know the client for the social insurance, the biggest in the world. You know, Germany, Germany is the first country using the CASMIC system. We call that Germany GRG. But the total population in Germany around, I think, 60 or 60 or 70 uh, million. But we are, yeah, we are 261 million. But social insurance has been covered, yeah, yeah. has uh, covered around 240 million. Okay. So we are the biggest country using yeah, the CASMIC system in a CBG. We are the, our own group. Huh? Yeah. And then covered yeah, for the social insurance, the biggest population in the world. Yeah. I think that's all from my answer. Thank you, uh, Dr. Amriza. Another question also addressed to you. I think it is in line. Uh, the question from Madam Najmiatu Fitria. Uh, when is the cost in Ina CBGs being evaluated due to our Indonesian purchasing power changes by year? Yeah, okay. Ideally, every year we have to update our Ina CBGs tariff nationally. Yeah, because we have the hospital level A, B, C, and D, okay? And we have another hospital, we call the special hospital, yeah? For uh, leprosy, for respiratory, uh, special for heart, cancer. So this is another special hospital. So different hospital, di different, uh, what we call the total, health, uh, one total hospital spending, hosp hospital expenditure. So that's why we cannot, uh, what we call, uh, we cannot uh, produce the same rate, yeah? the same tariff for the whole population, uh, for the whole hospital. Because why? Because every hospital, the spending, the annual spending, annual expenditure, not the same. Like hospital, we have the hospital staff, you know, uh, five star, four star, three star. So the total operational budget is uh, spending is not the same. So that's why, uh, even though we have the the same group of DRG or in our CBGs in every provincial, can uh, okay, uh, uh, but in uh, the uh, the total spending, total expenditure, yeah, every hospital not the same. So that's why, that's why uh, we have the uh, we have a different uh, DRG tariff uh, in a CBG tariff by type of hospital. So ideally, annually, but sometimes, yeah, in in practically in the ground we cannot we, we, we couldn't do that like that because to 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 what we call to collect data from the ground because because of the national tariff. So we have. Uh, to collect data based on the scientific uh, sample, you know, a statistically sample. So should be representative for the whole country. Uh, so for the whole province. Yeah. So sometimes we cannot, uh, my experience here, yeah, uh, around more than 20 years here, to collect the data, we cannot, we cannot do one year. So at least two years. Okay, so every two years. Because uh, increase the uh, every year increase actually uh, I think everyone know inflation every year, yeah. If increased number of staff, uh, uh, build uh, build new building, yeah, and then buy uh, the new drug, the new uh, medical equipment, MRI, CT scan, whatever, made, uh, very expensive medical equipment. So we have to update our tariff. Yeah, our, yeah, to make sure that how we can pay hospital fairly. BPJS will pay hospital, yeah, according the same level with the how much they spend to treat the patient uh, for the BPJS. Yeah, I think that's all for my Thank answer. You. Thank you, Dr. Amrizal. And the next uh, question is the address to. Dr. Dedi Almasdi, the question yes. comes from Professor Almasdi. 
the question is a clinical pharmacy management system was developed according to the actual situation. This system apparently improved work efficiency, standardized the level and accuracy of drug use, which will improve the rational drug use and pharmacy information service in the hospital. What's your comment on the statement and what hindering for our in general in order able to involve within the current situation? Thank you. Okay, thanks, okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Asmari, <laughs> Didi Asmari, yeah? Okay, okay. yeah. Sorry, uh, Dr. Ambrizal, oh. this uh, question to Dr. Dedi Almasdi. Okay, the, the, uh, the question. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Bu Mutator. Uh, the next question for for from uh, Prof. Almahdi, I think. Yes, uh, I agree. Uh, I agree with uh, Prof. Almahdi. Uh, the pharmaceutical service not 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 born not born for uh, from stone yeah? not born from stone but he's uh, uh, have uh, but, but it ha has ecosystem ecosystem so i think uh, we we must the 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 improve the uh, good ecosystem for pharmacy uh, practice especially in community pharmacy so uh, what i what we uh, must do i think uh we can uh uh uh, uh, uh so uh, many evidence related to uh, drug related problem in community pharmacy and then uh, evidence from uh, 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 evidence from uh, uh, how uh, pharmacists can uh, 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 resolve this 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 this, this problem I think I think uh, that is uh, we can do now uh, in uh, in eco uh, ecosystem uh, pharmacy, community pharmacy practice. Okay, I think. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dedi. Also, have another question to Dr. Dedi Almasdi from uh, Bapak Abraham Simatupang. How clinical pharmacists collaborate with uh, clinical pharmacologists in hospital setting? Thank you. Ah, uh, 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 thank you, Papa Simatupang. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, Bu Yeli. The uh, answer. Okay, then we move to another question from the chat box uh, from Professor Erizal. Uh, address the question to uh, Professor Oikusa. Uh, dear Oikusa Sensei, thank you for your interesting lecture. I have a question. Usually we screen for MCC by experiment. Is there a computational technique or software to predict the formation before we try in lab? Thank you, Sensei. Okay, I already uh, replied to it by a chat box, but um, this is the answer. Um, thanks for the interesting question. Uh, predicting whether two compounds will co-crystallize is a very interesting topic. There are some researches being done on this topic. Uh, for example, uh, there is a software that predicts whether a molecule will form a co-crystal by considering the complementary of its shape and hydrogen bond property. However, it is known that it is difficult to predict when a molecule has a charge that is a, a salt crystal. Also, from my experience uh, with this software, the predictions have not been very successful. Uh, to this day, the most efficient screening is still done by my student. Thank you for your good question. Thank you, uh, Sensei. Can I call you Sensei too? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have uh, another question actually here um, addressed to Dr. Ambrizal. 
Dr. Amrizal have many uh, uh, fans today exactly. because your presentation is very, very interesting. And uh, we Indonesian have to know about all the AINA CBGs and how our pharmacists play our important role in this uh, era. Okay, the question is like this, Dr. Amrizal. It yeah. seems like only hospital pharmacies that have clear position in inner CBGs. How about the community pharmacies, especially who works at private pharmacies? Thank you, doctor. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I think so, because of um, uh, inner CBGs, yeah, the area of inner CBGs is in hospital level, right now, hospital level inpatient and outpatient in the hospital, not in the community, okay? So uh, my, my expertise actually in the economic and financing yeah, uh, related, yeah, very close relationship with the clinical pharmacy and clinical pharmacy. So uh, all uh, my friend in clinical pharmacy, especially in Malaysia and Indonesia, so work together to, um, to help the yeah, uh, Ministry of Health yeah, to implement uh, uh, the drug, yeah, to implement the, the drug according to the evidence-based yeah, evidence practice. Uh, so uh, I, I inform again that um, uh, NICBG is very close related to clinical pharmacy. Yeah? But the community, yeah, we, we, we uh, uh, what we call the for the community patients, uh, uh, what we call a client for BPJS, yeah? uh, come to see the doctors in primary care, yeah? in clinic, yeah, primary care, because mass in Indonesia, they they will pay, yeah? uh, they will be paid by using the capitation, not using uh, inner CBGs. So in SBG is only related to the hospital. hospital. Yeah, hospital, not in outpatient, in, for example, primary care. Uh, primary care using the capitation payment. Okay, so but capitation payment, uh, 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 what we call Pukesmas or um, health center will be, uh, uh, will receive, yeah? will receive annually, annually budget. Yeah, fixed budget for annual annually. For example, around for two two thousand uh, people around that uh, health center. Yeah, so the the doctors or the uh, head of health center try to to use this budget, yeah, as the efficient uh, as possible, yeah, as possible because of the fixed yeah, fixed uh, budget. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's why in primary care, in health center, the main activity to promote, yeah, to do the health promotion prevention, yeah, because, because of uh, uh, the limited budget, yeah, using the capitation. Okay, so in clinical, so I, I, have, a, I have explained in my video presentation, the sick, sick rule of clinical pharmacy, hospital pharmacies. I think this six rule, I have done a work to, uh, together, collaborate with the senior pharmacists, especially in 16 tertiary hospital in this country, uh, involved in developing inner CBGs. Okay, that, that's all my, my answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Amriza. Uh, by the end of the answer from Dr. Amrizal. It looks like this is the end of our Q&A session and marking the end of this third plenary lecture session too. For those who still want further explanation, you can send an email to the committee. The email address is in our website, iccstp.far.unan.ac.id. As for our Awesome speaker, is there anything else you wanted to cover before a wrap up, doctor, professor? There is nothing for me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah. Okay, for... great.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hidehiro Ekusa from Department of Chemistry, mm -hmm. School of Science, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Japan. Professor Dr. M. Taher from Kuliah Pharmacy, International Islamic University, Malaysia. Dr. Clinical Pharmacy, Dedi Almasdi from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. And Dr. Amrizal M. Noor, PhD from Department of Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Public Health, Kuwait University. We really, really appreciate of all your being here. Thank you. Thank you very much for your incredible lecture, very inspiring and evocative for our further research progress. Now, I will give the screen control to the MC, to Hafizatul Akrami, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yeli, for guiding this plenary lecture very well. And I'll, I would like to thank to all of the speaker for sharing knowledge that very useful for all of us. Now, I would like to give all of the speakers certificate as the appreciation and thanks for your willingness to become the plenary lecture speaker in ICCSCP 2021. First, I would like to give the certificate to Dr. Hidehiro Wekusa to be on a screen. Thank you. <clears throat> And please give your bias smile because our ID committee will document okay. Thank you. I'll turn three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Okay. Second, I would like to give the certificate for Professor Dr. M. Taher to be on the screen to take the certificate. And please give your bias smile and I'll count. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Prof. Welcome, Prof. Didi. Okay, so the next, I'd like to give certificate for Dr. Clinical Pharmacy Apotheker Dedi Almasdi. Please go on the screen. Okay, I'll count. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And I would like also to give certificate to Doctor Amrizal M Nur MSc PhD. Please be on the screen. Okay, I'll count three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Okay, as our presentation for. Appreciation for our amazing moderator, Dr. Apotheker Yeli Octavia Sari, Master of Pharmacy. I would like to give the certificate to appreciation and thanks for the best uh, moderator today. Please be on the screen and give your best smile. Okay, I'll can. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yeli. Thank you. Happy Saturday. Thank you, Yeli. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Okay, for the next session, the attendants are welcome. Have an hour break to pray and have some lunch. We will continue our next session at 13.30 or 1.30 p.m. with our next amazing invited speaker del delivered by Apotekar Muhammad Aswad, SSE, MSE, PhD from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Hasanuddin. Professor Dr. Apotheker Yandi Shukri, SSE, MSE, from the Department of Pharmacy, Universitas Islam Indonesia, Dr. Apotheker Hilwan Yuda Teruna, MSE, from the Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Univer Universitas Riau, and Dr. Matt Abraham Simatupang, Dr. M. Kes, from Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Kristen Indonesia. And may you have a pleasuring break time. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your attention and sorry for all of the mistakes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And we'll see you again at 13.30. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akusa, Dr. Abiza, Prof. Taher, Pak Dedi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome.
Ranta dance is an Indonesian traditional dance originated from Minangkabau region which has very dynamic movements. The dance movement is inspired by Pencak Silat movement. Ranta dance is one of the most powerful dance that are served Feel that can cause a sound and harmonize with the music. Tari Rantak merupakan tarian tradisional Indonesia yang berasal dari daerah Minangkabau yang memiliki gerakan yang sangat dinamis. Gerakan tari ini terinspirasi dari gerakan pencak silat. Tari Rantak merupakan salah satu tarian yang sangat
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome once again to International Conference on Contemporary Science and Clinical Pharmacy, ICCSCP 2021, with the theme, The Role of Health Science and Technology in the COVID-19 Pandemic Era, organized by the Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. However, the end of the parallel session in each room marked the end of ICCSCP agenda. I hope all of us ha have had productive and inspire inspiring time together. I hope you found the presentation on this conference are informative and helpful. Now, before we op officially cl closing the conference, I'd like to call you upon Dr. Apotheker Salman MSE to present us with a word presentation for best speaker in oral presentation in each pharmaceutical field. Now, please help me to welcome Dr. Apotheker Salman and MSE to be on a screen, and the screen is yours. Thank you, MC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Especially all presenter, I will announce the best presenter. To all participants, we highly appreciate if you activate your video in this award presentation. And to all names that mention later on in this award, please click the raise hand button. To have our operator putting you in the screen while receiving the award, thank you. We are excited to announce the award of top three best oral presentation in the pharmaceutical chemistry categories. And the award goes to Sir Mesa Irna Suryani. Second, Purnawan Fontana. Yes. Serena Dama Yanti, congratulations. And next, three best oral presentation in the pharmaceutical technology categories. And the award goes to Sir Uswatun Hasana. Second, Nedita Putri Bandaro. First, Henny Lucida, congratulations. And next, three best oral presentation in the pharmaceutical biology categories. And the award goes to Sir. Neni Sandrawati. Second, Dira Hefni. First, Ruhaya Salsa Bila. Congratulations. And last but not least, the award of top three best oral presentation in pharmacology and clinical pharmacy categories. And the award goes to Sir Susi Ari Krishna. Second, Dia Aryani Perwita Sari. First, Emelda. Yeah. 
Once again, congratulations to all awardees. To other oral speaker, you are the best as well. We really appreciate you being here in this conference with us. Actually, the assessment result really come take among all oral presenter. However, we have to limit to only top three that will be given the award. Thank you very much. Now I will give the screen control to MC Ms. Hafizatul Akrami. The screen is yours. Thank you. Okay, congratulations for all of the best speaker. Now we will officially closing the conference. I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Apotheker Erizal MSE to deliver a speech for our closing ceremony and officially close ICCSCP 2021. To Professor, the, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas, Prof. Fatma Sri Wahyuni, Vice Dean, Bapak Dr. Salman, Bapak Dr. Clinical Pharmacy Dedi Almasdi, Chairperson of this conference, Prof. Dian Handayani, all organizing committee, and all professor in Faculty of Pharmacy, Andalas University, the honorable keynote speakers, invited speakers, and all participants. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For two days, we have a great time together, enjoy the international conference, ICCSCP 2021 that held by virtually Zoom meeting. It is a pleasure for us to see that this international conference has successfully attracted about 450 participants ranging from keynote speakers, invited speakers, experts, and students in the field of pharmaceutical science from various institutions. On the behalf of the Faculty of Pharmacy, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the keynote speakers, invited speakers, and all our presenters that had been shared the recent pharmaceutical sciences and related issues to all of us. I hope and believe this international conference can providing the important platform for discussion and knowledge sharing among the participants and to develop a new idea and strengthen the networking. Our special thanks also to all organizing uh, committees, IT staffs and students for your hard working to succeed this conference. Salman. Okay. Uh, no, no, I declare the second ICCSTP 2021 officially closed. See you again in the next uh, conference. Thank you for all of you. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I give uh, this uh, screen again to the uh, moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Professor, for closing this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, as your master of ceremony today, I'm deeply apologizing for our shortcomings and thank you for joining this conference. Now I will leave you with a quote by Stewart Brand, an author and innovative thinker, who once said, we can see the past, but not influence it. We can, we can influence the future, but not see it. Let us all be guided by all the things we have learned and heard throughout the conference and be able to see and influence our future. I'm Hafizatul Akrami from Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Andalas. Thank you for your attention and sorry for all of the mistake. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's take picture together. Let's picture together. Okay. Okay, we can take a picture together. A picture.